while we're leaving, we hear shots, bomb, 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 bomb. He's getting chased. I'm trying to get to the car because I know I have a gun in there. Like we're being chased. I'm in my head. I thought it was something. It's like, yo, if I can do this once, I know I could do it again. I didn't really learn my lesson. So now you're waiting to see what happens. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to tell them to hurry up and just go ahead and lock me up. I got expelled in uh, ninth grade. First year of high school, went to an alternative school in Roswell called Independence and just quit school because I was way too far behind. I was in the second chance program. Um, in that class, they didn't give you no credit. So by the time you go to a regular school, you're behind like three years. You know what I mean? So I just I just quit school, got my GD. You know. what, what were you getting in trouble for? What like what, were, what are you doing to get in trouble? I was just dealing with like a lot of racism. You know what I mean? Um coming from a school from the hood you know i didn't really deal with too much racism over there you know what i mean um even though i was like one of the only agents over there as well um the most i would hear is like oh jackie chan it's like that, <laughs> you know right uh but once i got to alpharetta don's creek it was more racist you know what i'm saying blatantly racist you know what i mean ching chong Chinaman, shit like that, you know what I mean? And um, after a while, you get tired of that, you know what I mean? I, you know, I want to fit in too, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, uh, you know, I'm a kid. <laughs> right. I'm not, I don't know about none of that stuff that's going on, you know what I mean? I'm a kid, so I'm just trying to fit in, you know what I mean? And uh, I got into a lot of fights. Um. And then, I, you know, there would be kids uh, getting picked on that didn't know how to fight, and I would, I would stick up for them, get in trouble, stuff like that. But after a while, you know, the, the, the principal started seeing what was going on, and uh, they wouldn't really do anything to me anymore. You know what I mean? Like, they would see, like, firsthand, because I'd be like, yo, these kids are racist. They said this and that to me. And they're like, nah. Well, even though they did that, you, you need to keep your cool. Um, but there was times where they seen it happen and they caught it red handed and they'd be like, man, look, I'm supposed to give you, you're supposed to be suspended again, but I seen with my own eyes what happened. So I'm gonna let you go. You know what I mean? And my parents, they became real cool with the assistant principals and stuff like that, you know, cause my parents were at the school every day cause I was getting in tr trouble every day. You know what I mean? And, um, at one point, it just, it just seemed like I, I stopped caring, you know, and a lot of the teachers were racist, too. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not just saying that because I'm Asian and, you know, the first thing I'm going to say is they're Asian or they're racist. No, it wasn't like that. You know, there was there's plenty of teachers there that, that actually wanted me to succeed, you know, like. And you but you as a kid, you could feel the genuinity, you know what I mean? But. But some of them, it wasn't like that. It was like there would, there was times where like, and right now I could have sued, you know, they would grab my hand, throw me into the locker, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, like, like the reason why I got suspended from school was cause, you know, I asked to go to the restroom. He tells me no. Well, another kid asked to go to the breast restroom and he's like, go ahead. I was like, bro, like, come on, man. Like, I just asked you, you know what I mean? Like, what's wrong with that? And he's like, nah, like, and he said something slick to me. And I kind of spazzed out. I think that was like my last draw, threw the book at him. And then I got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that got you in, a, in like a reform school. And then it's just. Yeah, well, they give you tribunal. It's like a court kind of thing to see if you can go back to a public school. Um, so they, uh, they said that I would have to do like a year or two of, uh, that alternative school thing. Um, and I would have to pass the second chance program. Um, but like I said, w once you get into second chance program, you're already going to be behind because, uh, the classes that they give you, they don't give you no credits for those classes. It's not like they give they, they teach you math. They don't teach you, uh, like you know, ninth grade literacy, 
liter, you know, literacy. They don't teach you none of that. They teach you uh, um, accounting. They teach you, uh, you know, classes that doesn't have credits at that time. You know what I mean? That wouldn't give you any credits. Right. So by the time you graduate uh, Second Chance, which takes, which takes about a year or two, and then you go uh, to the upstairs where they give you the actual classes, you're two behind, two years behind. So it just didn't make sense to me. At what point did you, like, what are you doing? Like, you can't drop out of school and stay in your parents' house. You have to do something for money. You have to start, like, I'm sure your parents were like, well, what are you going to do? Right. I mean, so, so yeah, I uh, dropped out of school. Uh, um, you know, I grew up as the only child. I don't know if you heard that in the other one, but like I was just always lonely, right? You know, okay. So like when I was living in an apartment, you know, in the poorer areas, it was like there was always something to do. You know what I mean? There's always something. Like we'd be out playing sports all day, all night. You know, whether it's hockey on the tennis court, football, just just something to do. You know. But then when I moved over here. It's like I'm isolated, you know, I'm just home stuck, you know what I mean? And then, uh, so I don't know what happened where I got in trouble doing something, maybe coming in late and, uh, I just ran away from home. You know, I ran away, uh, I stayed at, uh, one of my, one of my friend's house and, uh, his, his God brother, you know, he was a big time, like dope seller so that's how i kind of got into it and seeing how fast that money came i was like yo i could do this you know what right. I mean? yeah and i mean i was like 14 15 making like 300 dollars a day and i'm like 300 dollars a day i could buy like two pairs of jordans clothes <laughs> like, <laughs> just little dope but it was like exciting you know what i mean because right it just happened so fast and it's like i'm making that every day you know so where does that lead i mean does that lean that leads to what like gang activity you know well my god brother he was a gang member he was from south the south side college bar where pandas from. he's from the south side uh four part hateville jonesboro riverdale like those places and growing up as an Asian, you would hear about those places like, oh, yeah, those places are crazy. You don't want to be there, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you're a crip. Like, it's like blood territory. They they, they rough. They, they don't think right over there, you know what I'm saying? But he used to take me down there, and I used to have a blast, you know what I mean? Like, we'd be smoking and uh, just playing chess, like, like it was just normal, you know what I mean? Like I was like, oh, okay. I mean, if this was a gang bang, it was about I wanted, you know what I mean? And um, you know, little did I know, all that other stuff came along with it. But from what I've seen, I was like, man, we're just chilling. Like, what's so wrong about this? And um, yeah, I was gonna say, there's. It's funny, you know, if you grow up like in a middle class area and you go to the projects and you're with a bunch of guys that are from the project, like right. it's exciting. Right, right, right. That's exciting. happening. Like you can hang out in front of my house <laughs> for fucking a whole week and nothing happens. Right, you know, right, people right. walk by, walk at their dogs and go, Hi. You go, Hi. Yeah. You know, but there oh. people are walking around talking to themselves, they're getting into fights. Yeah. People are well, listen, when I I was, <laughs> I was renovating houses in like, you know, shitty areas, I would you could just during the day, two guys get into a knife fight in the middle of the street and they're you know, there's they don't stab each other. They're just swinging at each other and yelling and screaming about. There's some guys walking down the street talking to himself. You know, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's you. You know, you when you're young, you don't realize like oh, it's just really this is a fucked up place. <laughs> right. If you're 19 or 18 or 15 or something, you're thinking this is hilarious. Like this is yeah, this yeah. is free entertainment. Right, right, All right. So. I was like, yo, I kind of just want to be here. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I spent more time over there for a little bit. But then I started seeing the actual, 
downside of things. You know what right. I mean? People getting shot, you know, people getting beat up, people backdooring each other, taking, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah, nah, I'm I'm straight, you know? And, and, and when they first asked me to join the game, I was like, I was like, yeah, I'll call you. I'll call you. I'll give you a call. But I never gave him a call. You right. know what I Because mean? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> there's no upside here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the dude was like, yo, he was like, smokes this. And he gave me a bamboo bong to smoke weed with, right? And he's like, man, if you choke, I'm going to slap the fuck at you. And I was like, damn. Like, <laughs> I was like, I'm good. Yeah, it's not exactly camaraderie. <laughs> yeah, I thought we were bored. And uh, yeah, I just, you know, but eventually um, we left there, came back to Gwinnett. And in Gwinnett, it was like a whole nother gang, uh, which was like called Asian Gangster Crew. And uh, I was always intrigued by it, though, you know, because even as a kid, uh, like I would always see it on the news and stuff like that. So, yeah, I was going to say a bunch of newspaper articles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, when I when I seen that, I was like, OK, and this is where I'm from. You know, I was from there, so I knew everybody. So I was like, all right, whatever. And then uh, they got real drunk one day because uh, one of our uh, big brothers passed away. And that's when they were like, but you ready? And I was like, not really. <laughs> but they were like trying to feed me all this alcohol. So by then, I'm, I'm just major and drunk. And... Um, they talked me into it that day, you know what I mean? And that's what happened, you know? I mean, it's one of how, the biggest... How old were you? Uh, I was 16. Okay. And you were saying it's one so, of the biggest regrets? Yeah, I would say so, you know what I mean? Because nothing good came out of it, you know what I mean? Right. I went to court. Um, I go to jail. Uh, I catch a case, and, like, 99% of the people turned on me you know what I mean even when they was even making up lies you know what I mean like like I'm always I was always taught by my father that if you did something just go ahead and take responsibility for it you know what I mean but me like I'm kind of a smarter person where like if I know like me I calculate my time before I even go do anything you know what I mean like okay, I'm gonna go sell some weed. How much kind of time can I get for that? If I if I if I um if I get caught, all right, five. Okay, if I get five and I'll do a third, okay, I could do that. You know what I mean? But robbing and killing, I can't do that. You know, <laughs> I can't I can't do ten, twenty, thirty life sentences. You know what I mean? So I don't do it. So don't don't call me and involve me in that. You know what I'm saying? But people will involve you in it for no right. Reason, you know what I mean. So you're okay. So you're you're basically in the, like this gang activity, and that's essentially what is what is that doing for you? Like, I mean, I know you're saying there's no real, you know, nothing good came out of it, but there's got to be some kind of benefit. Is it just say I have a group of guys to hang out with that have my back when in fact <laughs> I don't really need them to have my back, or is yeah. it like, or is that I like I got a better supplier? I have people that can help me move product. Like at that time, like I said, it was just because I was, you know, an only child. I was a lonely kid. I was getting into a lot of fights in middle school and high school. And like, if I beat somebody up, they're just going to call their big brothers and jump me. You know what I mean? And I just hated that feeling. Like at one point, I just wanted to be feared. You know what I mean? Where, oh, you're not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't going around starting shit with people, you know what I mean? It was just always these other people that came from out of state, like New York and L.A., that they were just, they just thought they were super tough. And they would just go around picking on people, you know what I mean? And then once you start, uh, like, trying to stick up for yourself, you know, they'll bring, and if you beat them up, they bring their brothers, jump you, and, I was just tired of looking over my back, you know what I mean? So I just, I just, uh, just try to get with a group of 
people with the same mentality as me, you know. Um, so I guess that's like the only benefit, like the, the only thing that benefited me. But I don't even look at that like as a beneficial thing because most of the time it didn't even end up end up that way. Like <laughs> I was still fighting one on one. You know what I mean? You know when? So when did you get? When did you? I mean, when did you get like your first like a case? When did you get arrested? When did that uh, kind of? That, that was in two thousand twelve. Um. Even that, even with that, it was like a boy. It could have been avoided. You know what I mean? Because uh, so I was just like, well, how old are you? Two thousand twelve. I believe I was like twenty one. So in between sixteen and twenty one, you're a member of this of a gang, and you're just your primary job is selling. your you're a drug dealer. Yeah, you're just selling drugs. Where time, where are you yeah. getting where are you getting cl your clients from? Uh, different gas stations, you know, I would go to, you know, the gas stations I was at, I was going to a lot of car meets, uh, I was going to the club, it was, it was really tep like, easy. easy. And what, people just call you, they just, they know you, you're selling drugs, they call you and say, hey, can you bring me this, can you meet me here, can you? Yeah, because, uh, I mean, even in the camera video that they had of me, uh, like when I was in that gas station before the shooting happened, like the first thing I said when I walked in was, oh, I got tree, I got Molly, I got this. <laughs> you know, I was young and wild, you know what I mean? I was young and wild, didn't care. You've never been in trouble before that? I have, I have, but it wasn't um, for gang activity. I, I've, I've, been, I've been getting in trouble since I was 17 um, for selling weed. So what, I mean, what happens? That's what I'm saying. Like what, like you get arrested, do you go to jail for you know, that? Just, yeah. For drugs. Like when was the first, like after you joined the gang, how are you getting, how are you racking up criminal charges? You go to cell with somebody, boom, the cops jump out of a van. Like what happens? Like, how does that? No, it, it doesn't work like that. Um, I was just being stupid because, you know, once you join the gang, it's like, you just move reckless, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you're selling drugs and shit, but you're riding in a car five fucking people deep in a fucking Honda. You know what I'm saying? You look suspicious. <laughs> and then and then we're parked now in a in a abandoned, you know what I mean, park. You're eventually gonna get pulled over. You know what I mean? Shit like that. Um, you know, one time this dude, he was just talking crazy about my mom. This is when I was a juvenile, though. Uh, I just turned 17. And, no, 16. I was 16. Because everybody else, they took, uh, that was 17, they took to the adult facility. But I believe I was 16 at that time. Somebody said something about my mom. We went over there with machetes and all that. Uh, he wouldn't call, come out, you know, and he called the police. We ended up leaving. Uh, they came, put us on the floor. Um, it brought the dude back to, uh, you know, I guess to uh, to see if that was us. All right, sent us back in jail for that, you know, interrogated us and stuff like that. But I didn't do no time for that because I was a juvenile. They actually just let me go. I don't even think I was put on probation. Um so 17 that's when i'm officially an adult they finally uh hit me with my first sales case which was uh possession of meth with intent and at that time i didn't even know what possession of meth was i didn't even know what meth was i thought it was speed this guy told me it was speed you know or a crank or some shit how did that happen uh, you know, at that time, all the Asian people, well, the big time Asian people, that was their thing, you know. And I guess this is before people started about like uh, finding out what meth was and stuff like that. Because I didn't know what meth was, you know what I mean? Unless somebody was like, "Yeah, methamphetamine," then I'd be like, "Damn," <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they didn't call it that. They called it speed and crank, 
So I was like, oh, okay, speak, drink, whatever. You know what I mean? And at that time, I was like 17, didn't know. You know, I never heard of it. The only thing I've heard of was cocaine, uh, maybe heroin. But I wasn't dealing with none of that stuff. You know what I mean? I was, uh, it was weed and ecstasy too that I, that I knew, you know? So, um, I'm in the car with one of my big homies. He gets caught or we get caught because it's not even my deal. You know what I mean? Um, he leaves and I'm stuck in the car. You know what I'm saying? I guess it was like an undercover thing. Um, anyway, he tries to tell, tell the people that it's, that it was mine. <laughs> You know, and I'm like, bro, I don't even know nothing about this drug. You know what I mean? Long story short, they went through his phone. They found everything that he needed and he got in trouble for. You know what I'm saying? And they had to let me go. Um, And then comes the 2012 case. Because everything else was, it, it wasn't gang related. It was just me being stupid, being pulled over with a little bit of weed and stuff like that. Minor possession with weed. Uh, and there. I get that you were at the gas station, you know, but like, what's the backstory to why all of this? you know, unraveled, like what happened? Like, was there a, is there a story? Man, it was, it's, it's stupid because it, it wasn't even gang related. Like it most of these even... things are, you know what I'm saying? You ever notice no, that? Like no. you really look into it. Most of these things, yeah. like somebody stole someone's tennis shoes and people are getting shot. No, 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 no. This happened on 4th of July. Two Mexicans, drunk Mexicans came out their car. See, I had like a little girl that I was messing with at the time. And, uh, to be completely <laughs> to be completely honest with you, man. So me and my boy go is to the gas station to get those little sex pills. You know what I'm saying? Cause we're like, yo, it's fourth of July. We're gonna party. You know what I'm saying? So we go in. I see the dude that sh uh that got shot. His cousin is in the gas station. I accidentally bump into him. And then I'm like, oh yo, my bad, bro. My bad. And he's like, he's cool, we're cool. You know? Wait a minute, what's that story? You're saying I'm the guy sorry. that got, no, no, I'm saying you said you saw the guy that got shot. What's that story first? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you because okay. there, was, there was, there was like two, three people, you know, from their side. So when we go in, whose side? On their side. And there was three people on our side. Yeah. It was three people on our side, three people on their side. So is this, so we another, don't know another gang. No, 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 no. They're just regular Mexican people. Okay. So we go in and, you know, I say the same thing that I always say when I go into a gas station. I got weed. I got Zan. I got Molly. So, but somehow I, I, I bump into this guy, you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, whoa, my bad, bro. My bad. Like, blah, blah, blah. but I got the weed. I got it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he's like, oh, nah, no problem. They say no problem. So I'm like, okay, okay. So everything's cool. Boom, out of nowhere, the girl that uh that, that I was messing with bangs on the door and she's like, yo, yo, uh, they're trying to jump toad. They're trying to jump toad. I'm like, just bitch, go go back to the car because I don't want you to see what we're trying to buy. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. So uh so finally the dude leaves, we leave, and out of nowhere, while we're leaving, we hear gunshots. Bomb, 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 bomb. So we walk out. And um, he's getting chased by like two or three Mexicans, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm trying to get to the car because I know I have a gun in there, you know? So as soon as I get to the car, I just started letting off. I'm like, yo, why are we? like, we're being chased. I'm in my head. I thought it was something. So I get to the car, boom, 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 and drive off. You know what I'm saying? So. So you just spot you fire your gun at the, in their direction and take off? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, but my intention wasn't to shoot him. My intention was to just get the fuck, like, get right. the fuck away from me. Um, so when uh, we got back to the apartment, the story was 
uh see the girl came out the mexican dude was like trying to get at her you know my boy was like you know just leave her alone she came with her the dude started getting hostile you know i guess he was drunk it was fourth of july try to hit my boy my boy showed him the gun from his waistline and he swung again so my boy finally pulled it out shot him in the leg and then you would think that would stop it, but the dude actually started to chase him. <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy, but... um, So we get away anyways, and I'm not thinking nothing of it because, bro, like, he gave you a warning. He shot you. You didn't die, like... That's You're how I'm okay. thinking. We're okay. Yeah, yeah, we're okay. Like this is stuff. It's just, just leave us alone. You know. I mean, like, so either way, like the either the way, cop, the cops got your your tag number off. No, no, no. 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 Well, see, this stupid guy had a fucking neon green Honda Civic hatchback that no one else on Jimmy Carter had. So when we get to my apartment, because I only live like two minutes from there, I was like, bro. What you should do is just leave your car in the next apartment down. I'll pick you up. You just sleep in my house. He's like, nah, I got to go see my girl. I'm like, bro, you're the dumbest motherfucker. In this world. <laughs> that car is going to stand out. Right. So, boom. Uh, He's like, nah, I got to see my girl. I'm like, all right, whatever. So, he takes his car down Jimmy and gets pulled over. And and initially they they, they only charge him with with uh possession of marijuana with convict uh uh by, with uh with a tent and possession of firearm by convicted felon. Um but on my paperwork when I got it back, he said that he immediately wanted to talk to gang task force. You know, so it became a big issue. And plus uh we were being watched because uh some other Asian dude from California. He was a crip too. Uh, he got caught with a lot of guns. Like I guess he was trying to sell them. So he turned into a confidential CI uh, with with them, and uh, said that he would get a lot of guns off the street, including from us. And uh, that's why we were being watched throughout that whole thing. So. And we, it was just bad timing. And it, it was just stupid, period. Just stupid, period. But those Mexican people came to court and testified that, you know, that was our fault and stuff like that. So, uh, I don't know. It's crazy. So, okay. So, <laughs> what did you get charged with? I got charged with three counts of aggravated assault, one count of aggravated battery, uh, possession of firearms by a convicted felon, uh, two counts of gang activity, and possession of marijuana with intent. Because when they raided my house, they found this is how they how petty they are. They found baggies of like nothing in there, but they they could try to charge me with possession with intent and possession of firearms by a convicted felon. So, but none of those, st- none of those stuck. They just try to, you know, just give me as much as I could or as much as they could to, you know, hopefully some stick. Type shit. Well, how did you get arrested? They show up at your house, knock on the door politely and ask you to come downtown. No, they, they came with flashbangs. They came with M16. They came with riot shield. They came with snipers. They can't, the only thing they didn't bring is the tank. You know what I mean? And Gwinnett, they have a tank. You know what I mean? They, that's the only thing that that, that they did it for. Were you walking were you walking out to your car or they yeah. kicking the door? See, see, what happened was my little brother, uh I think he was supposed to come get some tree, like some weed from me or something. And he's coming in and he's like, Bro, he calls me, he's like, Bro, there's police everywhere in your apartment. I'm like, I mean, there's police everywhere in my apartment all the time. So he he parks and he's like, nah, bro, they're like right there at your apartment. You know what I mean? And uh, I was like, 
All right, well, let me get everything out of my apartment. So I get all the guns, I get all the drugs, and run to my uh my neighbor's house, and I'm like, bro, just hold this for me. You know, so I give it to him. Whole time, I didn't know that they had snipers watching this whole thing, me going to the other guy's apartment. So uh, I'm not thinking nothing of it. Five minutes later, he's like, yo, they're coming. So when he said that, I'm like, all right, we need to get the fuck up. Like, people are asleep and shit. I'm like, everybody get the fuck up because we got to get out of here. So we start running out. We start running out, and that's when they're already coming in with riot shield and stuff like that. Like, it's on the floor. <laughs> okay. So they, they handcuff everybody, take you downtown. You or everybody goes downtown? No, I was the only one that they took. Uh, they took me to the uh, Jimmy Carter police precinct. Pre police precinct. I actually me and the girl that I was. Uh, yeah. They charge you with everything. I mean, do you get bond or do you see a lawyer? When I get there, uh, they give me. They didn't give me a bond. Uh, I spaz out some. Okay, when 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 they when they when they locked me up, I had about two grams of Molly on me, and I had five then. And see, I didn't know what they were raiding my house. For. I mean, you knew my they house. were coming. Why did you have anything on you? See, I didn't know that they were coming for that, because, like I said, I'm stupid. I'm, I'm in, my, in my mind. I'm thinking no one got killed. No one got you know self defense. You know, go uh, look at it. Go look at the tape. You know, when you're on drugs, you just think stupid. You know what I mean? Right. So when they when they were coming up, I was thinking more. It was like, okay, maybe it's because they think I'm selling drugs at my house. You know. So I had five grams of Molly. No, I had five Zans and two grams of Molly, and I popped it right before they could even get me. <laughs> so when I got in the jail, I was going ape shit, you know. And uh they threw me in the junk tank, brought me out of the junk tank. So they finally put me in like where like it's like holding cell, holding cell, holding cell, and then it's like, okay, from here you're gonna get your fingerprint. From here you're gonna take the picture. From here, okay, so I look to my left and I see my, my code offended. And I see the picture on the thing. It says, keep them separated. You know what I mean? But both of the doors are open. So I'm trying to get to him. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, yo, I got to get over there. Talk to him real quick. While I'm going well, over there. I, mean, I, don't think, I don't think that's going to do any good. But at this point, right, he's, right. he's already done all the talking he needs to do. Right. So by the <laughs> that's time you're, that's why there. you're there. By the time I get over there. No, no, no. He didn't tell. It was another guy that got caught with the car. Oh, okay. I thought that was the guy you were talking about. Yeah, no, no. So they no, wanted you separated from another guy. Right, 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 right. So um, I try to go talk to him. The police catch me. I start spazzing out, doing something. They beat me up. Uh, in Gwinnett County Jail, there's actually like a lot of lawsuits about this that where they bring you into this back room with no cameras. And they just beat the living shit out of you. You know what I mean? And I could have sued them too, but I just, you know, I was just already happy to be out. So I just didn't even pay no mind, but they beat the shit out of me, bro. And then um, they sent me to the mental ward because they thought I was like, just, I, I, I had mental health. And I, I probably did because, think about it, bro. I took five grams or two grams of Molly and five FedEx <laughs> bars. Not in my right mind. Right. So they took me there. I was there for about seven days, uh, going crazy. My lawyer came, well, a court appointed lawyer came and see me. He's like, Are you going to hire anybody? I was like, Yeah, yeah, I'm going to hire somebody. He goes, Well, they're trying to give me 40 years. So I'm like, Fuck. So I call around to the mother of my kid, call around to, you know, certain other people. And they're like, bro, you're on the fucking news right now. Like, things is not looking good to you. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm just depressed. But at the same time, I, I kept my head up because 
I'm reading all these charges and I'm like, bro, nah, like a lot of these ain't even going to stick. And even if it does, like the most I'm looking at is eight. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm like just trying to prepare myself that I'm going to do eight years, you know? And, um, for some reason, when we go to preliminary hearing, uh, well, I, I paid, I gave my judge, uh, my lawyer $50,000 and I had one of the best lawyers in Gwinnett County. His family is uh, the uh, founders of the Gwinnett County Bar System. So w when anybody wants to be become a lawyer uh, in, the, in the county of Gwinnett, they have to go through my lawyer. You know what I mean? And at that time, my judge, his son was trying to be a lawyer, and he and, and my lawyer had to swore him in to be a lawyer. You know what I mean? So... This guy was really up there, you know what I mean, especially in Gwinnett. But anyway, we go to preliminary hearing. I get almost all my charges dropped. I get the aggravated assaults dropped. I get the gang activity dropped. I get aggravated battery dropped. I get only thing I, I had left was the possession of firearm and possession with intent. You yeah, know the hard mean? one. That's a hard one. Right, right, right. right. On film firing the weapon, right? Right. But then... Three months later down the road, they indict me. So I have to face those charges once again. They indict you in the, the, the state indicts you, or is this federal? No, state, state indicts me. So I have to go through all the process again. It lasts for like three years. And then finally, the day that we're supposed to pick the trial, um... Uh, the judge comes up to me, or well, well, my lawyer comes to comes to me with the plea, saying four years of house arrest or eighteen months in jail. Um, but he was like, before you take the four years, this prosecutor, she fucking hates you. Just you know what I'm saying? She's gonna find any reason to lock you up, and even if you do right for three years and you fuck up on that last year, you're gonna do four years of prison. So I was like, all right, I'll just take the eighteen months. So I took the 18 months, got out, and um, I guess they were still looking looking for me. You know, where'd, you do, where'd you do the 18 months? Uh, Archer State Prison. Okay. Are those yeah, the pictures was, you sent me? Yeah, the, the first first one, I think, with the, the white and blue shirt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's like Archer State Prison. All yeah. right. You know, and that's another thing I want to say when Panda was like, you know, oh man, Asian people are food. No, the fuck they're not. You know what I'm saying? At least not me. You know what I mean? Right. It's just all how, how you handle yourself, man. You know what I mean? Because they say the same things to white white people, but there's a lot of white people that I know in there that have go the fuck in. You know what I mean? And and you was not fucking with them. There's this guy named, uh, what's it? He was a ghost face, man, but, uh, Ramsey, he did a lot of my tattoos. That's some guy you don't want to fuck with. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't know what what type of time he was on. To me, when I was looking at his videos, he looks real sweet. You know what I'm saying? So I, I see him getting extorted. You know what I mean? But not me. You know, at one point, you could ask anybody at Archer State Prison if you was a crip, you was checking in with me, man. For sure. I also think, it, <laughs> and it also depends on if you're, if you're useful. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like yeah, if yeah, you're, yeah. you know, like I taught real the real estate class. Like everybody wanted to be in my class. Uh, you know what I mean? Like everybody wanted to. You know, they needed. Or if you're doing legal work, there are guys that are do legal work. Like nobody bothers them. Why? Because I'm doing eight guys legal work on the compound. Like those eight guys are like, don't fuck with that dude. He's doing my right. legal work. You know, so I mean, it depends kind of on your you. Yeah, you're absolutely use, right. You you're know, absolutely right because with me, I somehow was getting all the cigarettes in. You know what I mean? Right. And this is when a time when nobody had cigarettes. So, you know, I was feeding feeding everybody. You know what I mean? Like, you know. So of course, I'm not saying I was the hardest one out there. Like, you know, the even or either the craziest one. I had 18 months, man. I'm not trying to get into it with right. you. <laughs> Try to pick another five, five years. Right, right, right. Oh, you've heard those stories. Guys come in with 18 months. 
they end up they end up you know getting into a fight or sticking somebody the guy falls down and dies next thing you know they got 10 more years you know i that just happened to my uh one of my brothers man uh i forgot where he was at but he was rolling with the mexicans man they just caught a body but luckily uh Luckily, the Mexican he uh, he already had a life sentence, so he he just claimed the body. You know what I mean? But yeah, man, it gets it gets real ru- uh, reckless in there, bro. So you, I mean, you got out, go to a halfway house, you get out of a halfway house, start over. No, well, see, at that with that charge. They wouldn't send me to the, anything like that. I just had to max out because it was a violent charge and it was only 18 months. You know, nobody, nobody, halfway houses don't want you. Nah, they didn't want me. Um, and then, so when I got out, I was still stuck. You know, when you get out of the state prison, it's like so much going on. And I came out worse, I feel like. I came out worse. You know, there was no being humble. For me, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I can see I that. You're not a savage, yeah. You're angry, you're you know? pissed off, you want to, right? Right, and then it's just like, yo, if I can do this once, I know I could do it again. You know, I didn't really learn my lesson. I was in there smoking cigarettes, living, I had three phones in there, I was just making money. You know, I didn't really learn my lesson, I feel like, you know. Well, a couple of years after I get a gun charge in Fulton County, I was, you know, I was with my baby mama. I had my kids with me. Uh, I guess I was still being watched, you know what I mean, by the same people that locked me up. But this is in a whole nother county now because I moved to Fulton County. And um, he, uh, he said that, uh, you know, they've been watching me. You know, they've been watching the traffic coming in and out of my house and stuff like that. So uh, one day we were we were going on a vacation to Biloxi and um, they pulled us over. As soon as we crossed the border from Fulton County to Gwinnett County, they pulled us over and uh, they found a gun. Uh, my baby mama said it was hers, but she she messed around and told him that Oh yeah, I know that she kind of has that gun, you know, laying around and stuff like that. Anyways, they locked me up for it, um, and Wait, I I don't understand. She she said the gun was hers, but then she said that it was yours. No, she said that I know that I have like she has it in her house. So it's oh, like that you knew. Oh, okay, you knew. So it was constructive possession. Yeah, wow. constructive possession. Yeah. And that then, money, uh, and like, that's such a fucked up charge, bro. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is. It is. Um, I mean, I get it, I get it. You know what I mean? But I don't know. It's just, it wasn't like I was looking for trouble. I was with my kids. You know, I'm trying to protect my kids. You know what I mean? But I get it. You know, I, I you know, I made those decisions in the past where I lost my gun rights and stuff like that. But I'm gonna just have to move smarter. You know, but uh. So with that, uh, I go to court. They dismiss my charges. The prosecutor tells me, "Hey, uh, you know, I'm gonna dis- I'm gonna do you a favor. I'm gonna dismiss these charges, but you got to be careful because the agents that are keep coming to your court for uh court case, they're trying to take it to the feds. You know, so that day, that same day, I took all my stuff and I moved straight to California." You know what I mean? And, um, uh, Where are you now? I'm in Georgia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. So, after a year and a half, they put out a warrant on me. I get into a car accident in Arizona. Uh, and, and I'm somewhere in the desert, somewhere. I don't know where I am. I call the uh, towing company. They're like, well, I don't know where you are. I call the police. So, I call the police. And he's like, okay, well, we're on the way. So they get there. First thing they do is run my name. <laughs> and he's like, uh, Mr. Kim, uh, uh, we're going to have to lock you up. And I'm like, for what? He's like, man, you got a warrant. And I was like, a warrant? And then uh, 
I'm like, from where? He's like, ATF. I'm like, ATF? What the fuck? But I already knew what time it was, you know what I mean? So they locked me up. Uh, They take me to Florence, Arizona, I believe, first. Florence, Arizona. Then they moved me to Oklahoma. Then they moved me to... Oh, and then they bring me to like a holding facility in Atlanta. You know what I mean? And then through that time, it was hard because when I was in Arizona, they're like, yo, nah, you're going to get five off the muscle. Uh, when I got to Oklahoma, they're like, man, Three. shit. No, no, when I got to Oklahoma, they're like, bro, you should be worried about armed career criminal. You know what I'm saying? I'm oh, like, yeah. You think that'd be I'm 15 like, for you, right? All right. Right, and I'm like, I'm well, like, they okay, didn't. I got any assault. Uh, so they're thinking five. You're thinking five years because you had drugs and a gun. Because you, a, an, a career. I'm sorry, a felon in possession of firearms is three years, right. mandatory minimum. But if you have drugs involved, it it becomes five. And if you're armed career, if you're a career criminal, then it's fifteen. Right. But see, I didn't have any drug. I just had a, uh, I just had a uh, uh, a fire. Okay. But um, it it also went with your criminal history as well, and um, I was just worried because I had I had a violent charge, and then I didn't know because you know I had three counts of aggravated assault at at the same time, but I didn't know if they separated those or used that as one. You know, if it happened on the same day, they uh, they finally told me, yeah, that's actually counted as one. Right. And then and then it was uh, for some reason on my paperwork, it said possession would intent to sell. But really, it was actually a simple possession. You know what I mean? So they had to knock that off. And then one of my charges, they couldn't count because I was it, it happened when I was 17 and I was like. 15 years put like over you know what I mean so yeah I I mean I got blessed with that too you know what I mean so what happened uh well my um my guideline came out to like 32 to 38 or something like that well no I was on criminal criminal category four but they dropped me down to a three because a lot of my shit was just like misdemeanor marijuana charges. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they just took those off. It sent me back to a criminal category three. My uh, my sentencing guideline came out to 30 months to 38 months, and he went a little under and gave me 27 months. Oh, you, you got a fair prosecutor. I had a fair judge. Oh, okay. I'm going to say something's, yeah. Um, I, had, I had a really fair judge. So yeah, because usually psh, they're not knocking anything off. They're 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 trying to boost everything up. Right? Did you have Did you have a federal public defender? No, and that's another thing. Okay, now if I ever caught a fed charge, I would use a federal defender. That yeah, I was gonna say, bro, they're they're you know they're good. Like and like yeah, the, the right. ones I've had have all been good. Right, and um, I spent thirty thousand dollars on a a, a a lawyer. Only on the only reason why I used him was because he knew about my case. He's the one that got it dismissed in my state. But when it comes to the fence, bro, he was cussing me out like, "Oh, don't listen to those people telling you that." You, uh, I'm like, bro, okay, let me ask you something. If you was facing whatever and you were fighting for your life, would you just lay down all day or read books trying to see like what what can help you? And he was like, oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And I'm like, bro, like, and then and it's crazy because everything I told him was going to happen, happened. You know right. what I mean? I was like, yo, my guideline is going to be right here, you know, just ask him if I can get a little under. You know what I'm saying? I'm not asking for too much. He's like, no, you're going to get a year and a day. You'll be out. I'm like, man, you're crazy. You're, you're, you're selling me a dream. And then after after court, you know, I ended up cussing them out. You know what I mean? And uh, 
I was just like, bro, I could have done way better getting a public defender than, you know what I mean, just paying you $30,000 wasting my money. And- 30 grand to plead guilty. Right. Listen, I paid 75 grand to pay, to plead guilty. In the feds? In the feds. Yeah. It's just stupid. Stupid. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's definitely not worth it in the feds. You know, in the state, maybe, you know what I mean, because you could kind of pay your way out of certain things, but in the feds, there's no paying nothing out. It's there's, just, no, there's more negotiation in, right, in right, the right. than there is in the feds. Right, right, right. And it just depends on who you get, you know. But my 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 public or my federal defendant, he was he was just fire, fire. I still remember his name, Colin Garrett. If you're watching this, man, I'm like, you, man. oh, so Colin Garrett. So what happened? So where'd you do that time? In the feds, uh, eight, uh, I did 27 months. No, where? Oh, USP Atlanta. Oh, okay. Yeah, USP Atlanta was sweet. You know, we had like literally there were like at least two phones in every door or every room, every cell. You at one point, well, not, I can't even say at one point because there was no point in time where if you got caught with a phone, you're going to the shoe. The only time you're going to the shoe is if you get caught with a knife. Um, or, well, you know, I, so the the thing about like the pens, like they're trying to keep these guys from stabbing the guards. You know, they're, they're trying to right, keep right, them right. from stabbing each other and the guards. Like, like so something petty, they're not petty. You know, you go to a low or a camp, it doesn't matter what you have. You're going to the fucking shoe. You're in trouble. All right. They're going to, you know, but in the, they got bigger pro. The COs have bigger problems to worry about when you're in a pen. Right, right, right. And it, it was like that. It was like that. Um, you know, when I was in the feds, I was on uh, I was on gang time over there. And, you know, you would have like SIS. I don't know if you know what SIS is. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> SIS would come to us and be like, you know, if you just, you know, stay calm about this situation, I'll let you get away with this situation. You know it. You know, it's it's crazy because it's like I can't say like inmates ran the the jails, but they kind of they, they kind of did it. They kind of did in a way, you know what I mean? But they could dictate how certain things go, you know, and, and and not go. So, you got out on that charge. I got out, so I was on probation for three months. I mean, no, no, no three years. Uh, I was doing good, man. You know, I got I got out there during COVID, so it wasn't no drug tests or anything like that. Um, and then out of nowhere, a year or two later, they go back to doing codophone, where you have to call in every day to see if you have a drug test. You know, at that time, I didn't think we were ever going to do that. You know what I mean? So, boom, they called me out of nowhere one day. He's like, Mr. Kim, can you take a drug test? Uh, I, drug, I take a drug test, fail for marijuana. And then he's like, all right, well, we're just going to put you on class, dude. And so ever you, since you, then... You failed the test. You failed, right, I failed the test. Right. Um, I mean, it, it was still going good for a while. Uh, and then last Christmas, like I had some family come over. And um, we, we went to the mall. Well, yeah, I took them to the mall, uh, got pulled over. They had a whole bunch of stuff on them, which I didn't know, which I should have been more careful about. But these were like my little nephews. They were like 14. You know, I in my head, I just didn't think they would have that type of stuff on them. They had guns on them. They had drugs on them, you know. But, I mean, luckily, they all took accountability for it. They, it, all, it, it was all found on their persons, you know what I mean? But still... They looked at it as a probation revocation. Took me back to court. Um, even the judge agreed that uh, didn't really have nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? So right. he threw all that out. Um, just violated me for another dirty. So he put me on house arrest. Uh, that's what I'm on right now. Uh, somewhere along the line, I fail again. And that's what I want for probation revocation for this time. So, but really, I, I, huh? sorry, 
I was going to say, I have a question. What what happened with the panda thing? We never talked about that. Oh, panda, man. Panda's so full of shit, man. Panda's what what shit. happened? Look, you know, at, during that time, I was a little kid, you know what I mean? But I know, I know about the story, you know what I mean? And, um, he just, like, I was watching an uh, interview and he, well, how he said he came back. And he was in the holding cell with four of them, and he's like, "What? Well, do y'all either want to fight one on one, or do you want me to just beat the shit out of all y'all?" Like, man, he's full of shit, bro. He's full of shit. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, you know uh, what happened? What happened at the um? What was it? A uh, Chili's or a uh, Benigan's? What was it? Was it? it was a TGA Friday. Oh, TJ. Okay. Yeah. What yeah. happened? Is that basically what happened? You were. Yeah, you know, his chicken just got killed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I wasn't saying that was bullshit because that's what really happened. What I'm saying is how he just tried to act hard, talking about oh when he went to the jails and like he he punked out all he beat one up and three of them went to the door banging for help. Like nah, that didn't happen for sure. He was quiet as a mouse when he got into that holding cell. You know what I mean? And, and he's been in hiding. We don't know who that dude is. We didn't. We didn't. To be honest, we didn't know who that dude was. I I seen a clip somehow, like on my explore page, and I was like, you know, watching it and said, "Oh yeah, Panda, I'm a blood from Atlanta." So I know a lot of bloods from Atlanta. So I I I, I was like, "Who is this, bro?" So I, I sent the sent this thing around. They're like, "I don't know who this guy is." So finally, somebody texted me back and was like, oh, bro, that's, you know, woo TGA Friday, your big homie. You know what I'm saying? So I was going to say, but not, like you said, that was before your time, right? It was before my time, but we were alive, though. We were just young, you know what I mean? But we heard the stories about it. You know what I mean? We heard the stories about it. And if you know who, uh, if you know who the guy is, we call him Big Bolo, the one that actually killed his his people. And and oh yeah, another thing was uh, Panda was saying, oh yeah, they're in there sucking dick. You know, Asian people are a food. Asian people are a prey. No, the fuck they're not. Only people like you are prey. You know what I'm saying? Because my big homie in there, goddamn, bro. If you, I wish I could show you pictures and shit. This guy has like thirty net bags full of food. You know what I'm mean? saying? Living yeah. great. I I mean, like the guys in the, you know, I, I I don't know. I was gonna say the guys in the medium and the guys in the you know the the Asians that I knew in the medium and the and the low security like nobody bothered them. The guys in the medium nobody bothered them. The the thing about the Asian I mean, that I noticed. The thing about the Asians that I notice is that they're willing to fight right away. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's just because they've been fighting their whole lives or what, but they're yeah. they're willing to fight. The other thing I notice about Asians, I mean, not the the stuff you're you're telling me, right? But because right. you're it's mostly, you know, gang stuff, but Asian criminals, you know, that that I've met are usually pulling off like big time scams. Yeah, or yeah, or, yeah. or big time operations like I know you're saying no no I was kind of just selling you know at a small level I was just you know yeah. but a lot of these guys are like they're importing tons of you know they they very quickly seem to move up and do much more complicated operations for sure. um, for sure. but you know but you know Panda you and Panda you know that's that's not you know you guys were it was just more you know gang related yeah, pan, pan, panda. <laughs> Yo, panda and them razor, they're not a factor anymore. You know what I'm saying? I'm not glorifying this life. I'm not glorifying this life at all. You know what I'm saying? But they they just haven't been a, a factor since forever. You know what I mean? Uh, well, I know. think I think that you know you're talking about. Asians and you know as Crips and Bloods you know in those yeah. gangs but I mean you know got to, you have to admit like in the triads and those types of gangs in, in California like they're massively huge but they're they're big into stuff like like human trafficking and and you know you know smuggling in humans or 
um, what is it, you know, importing, you know, heroin and stuff like that. Like those are big operations, but they're in California and, and they're all working together. Like you guys are at a gang level, a street level. Yeah. 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 So, that's true. You know, so I, uh, I think it's, I think it's important to differentiate those two factors. You know, you're saying that in the Crips and the Bloods, like the Asians aren't really a huge factor, but you know, in a, in a, in a massive, when you put them all together, they, yeah. they're, they're doing some serious stuff. So for sure, for but, sure. But those, the, but that's like the triads out in California. Um, yeah, for sure. So now you're waiting to see what happens with your uh, probation. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to tell them to hurry up and just go ahead and lock me up. What well, are the rest of my probation? <laughs> wash it. Yeah, please. You know, yeah, I know a lot of people. They're like, you know, like I, I used to say, if I didn't need to go to the halfway house, like I wasn't getting out to anything. I had nowhere to go. So I needed to go to the halfway house. I always told people I, I'd rather have just done the time in prison. Right. Like I would have rather walked out. I would have done more time in prison if I could have skipped the halfway house and skipped probation. The problem was I had no money. So I don't right. have any choice but to go to go to go to the halfway house so I can work and save money. Like I had nowhere to go. If it weren't for that, I would have just said, I would have been like, I just, let me stay in prison. Let me just right, I'll do right, another right. year. I'd rather do another year than do four or five years of paper. Right. And me, yeah, I just, you know how it is, like w with us, you know what I'm saying? You'd rather just get your probation out the way, man. Especially because, you know, my probation is only until December 10th. I do not want to go to court and then for them to be like, well, let's extend your probation. You know what I mean? I'd rather just go up there and be like, look, before you say anything, let me turn myself in. Right. <laughs> you know because I mean? I just, I'm just tired of being probate, uh, probation. I'm on an ankle monitor. It's just crazy. Yeah, I'd rather just go to jail. What's your, you know, they, they, your probation officer? I mean, sorry. What's your, um? yeah, what's your probation officer saying? D or did they give you, did they give you a public defender? See. Yeah, my public defender is the same public defender that helped me out last time. You know, what's so he saying? He's fire. He was like, "Man, I don't see them doing all that." He was like, "I don't see them." I don't see them just. Camera. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He says, "He says, uh, I don't see them doing that. I see them just cranking up your treatment." But I don't see them doing that. I see them either because my probation officer keeps saying rehab. You know what I mean? But if you send me to rehab, rehab is for six months. I get off December 10th. You'd you know rather just do not go go to jail for 30 or 60 days. Right, right. Like, why do I have to do rehab for six months when I get off probation one month? You know what I mean? Doesn't make sense. So what are you going to do? What are you doing for work? What are you going to do for work? What do you mean? When I get out? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, me and my me and my boy got a, a jewelry company that we're uh we're actually uh starting now. Um, uh, we're actually taking the, trying to take it to uh overseas to Korea because we know like a lot of um like Korean uh artists and stuff like that, like hip hop artists and stuff like. Yeah, I don't know if you know about like Jimmy Boy, Ben Baller, and stuff like that over here, and Johnny oh, Bang. I don't know about it, like. That make like custom uh pieces, grills and stuff like that. Well, they're doing really good, but uh we're trying to hit a different market in Korea to actually try to do that over there. My father was from a wealthy family, my my mother uh was from a loving family, you know, and they were actually not weren't allowed to see each other. They kinda like this was like a secret, you know, rendezvous, secret love love affair and uh and it came along, but then it ended up not working out anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, so uh, I was born in 1979. So uh, it was like fairly soon after the Vietnam Vietnamese War. The Vietnam War ended in 1975. Uh, my dad was a part of the military over there. And like uh, my mom was forbidden to even see him. But he would like sneak away and they would have their, their little rendezvous and then I happen <laughs> when when you say the okay so the 
so basically they were like fleeing did they were they fleeing communism or well, at that the time, it, well at that time they were still like dealing with the aftermath of it okay right like my dad's family was from a very wealthy family right. and they they basically just took everything yeah i was gonna say that like, you went down to well. zero yeah you just went down to zero um so they were just trying to figure out a way to survive because yeah. i mean they were going in there just basically murking everybody yeah. i mean you know you're the losing side. It's kind of like, that's how war, war is, you know, the winning side takes the spoils. Um, so my dad um, escaped first okay. to America when I was conceived, right? And so then after I was born, uh, he had already made it to America and then he sponsored us. So then me and my mom escaped on a boat when I was six months old, uh, picked up by a Chinese fishing boat and I was in a refugee camp in Thailand. So I was probably about one and a half years old before I finally made it to America. So we were in a refugee camp for a year. Uh, then we made it to America. Soon after that, my sister was born. Okay. So I have a younger sister, two years younger than me. But then about when my sister turned one, my parents split. So my mom. Where did they relocate to? They, like, did they hit California? No, stay they, were there? Here they were here in Georgia. Yeah. Oh, well, we're here in Tampa. But oh, yeah, man, yeah they were. They, so they came to Atlanta. Wow. Like yeah. all they were like they went all the way across the country. Well, I think, yeah, because I think uh my dad was sponsored through a church. Okay. So he got here uh and and I guess it was based here in Atlanta. Okay. So he was over here working in a you know Chinese restaurant as a dishwasher, you know. And when we got here, you know, we were living very poor, you know, uh section eight, you know, and very low income. Uh and then, you know, I'm really kind of, you know, my mom and my dad's, the, the family's always had beef, you know? So there were a lot of members of my dad's family that were already over here that already didn't like my mom. So my mom was already like, you know what, screw this. And she walked out on him with $500 in her pocket and me and one arm, you know, not in a country she didn't know without knowing the language, you know, but so, but my father actually raises my sister. So I have a sister, but we literally were raised completely separate, Okay, you know? So uh, my childhood was basically, you know, poor. Uh, my mom worked two jobs during the day, sold purses at night, you know. So I'm on the street. Like, I, I remember coming home from school, kindergarten by myself, like, you know, first grade. like Latch key kid. Yeah, you know, I, I just basically learned how to take care of myself, you know. And um, it wasn't like my father wasn't around. Like, you know, I would still see him. I knew he was my father, but it was on like a visitation over. I would see him once a month for a weekend or my sister would come down once a month for, for a weekend or something like that. But he wasn't really there as a father figure, right. you know? Uh, so, I mean, where did I, where was I out? I was in the streets, you know, and being in the streets and then, you know, all black impoverished neighborhood, you know, we were looked at as food, you know, picked on or beaten up. So, you know, me and my buddies that I made that were also Asian, you know, just decided that we're just not going to be prey, you know. So we banded together and, you know, and that's those were my those became my brothers. Those became my my father figures. And we had each other's back. I would I would kind of compare it to like, you know, like a Navy SEAL unit. You know, you got to trust that this guy behind you is going to be looking back there so that you can't because you can't look back there right you know so these guys became my brothers you know and uh we took care of each other is this like like an established gang or you're saying no this is like eight or nine of us or is this like hey no this is like a, a no this is definitely an established gang we okay. were uh bloods okay you know? and, and we were bloods at a time that bloods wasn't Lil Wayne wasn't a blood yet, so, right. you know, but, you know, so in Georgia, most of the uh, African-Americans were black gangster disciples, uh, you know, and so we chose to rival that, you know, we, and plus we're not black, right. you know what I mean? So we chose to rival that. So, the, you know, a lot of the confrontations we got into were with a lot of black people, you know, until we earned our own respect. You know, that they and, and respect comes very easy. Like I even tell my kids, I was like, you know, once you are in the fight, you won yeah. because it doesn't matter what the outcome of that fight is. The fact that you're willing to be in it automatically means you won because you just earned that respect that they know that he'll go. He's going to go. Right. It's just not going to come easy. It's just, you yeah. know, it's, it's not going to happen like that, you know, so. That, that's what we that's what I had to do day in day out but my whole life is like that 
you know, have always been like earning respect, you know. Well, were there any, I mean, only because I've, I've researched uh, for another story where like, were there any triads in Atlanta or are they mostly in New York and, and California? The triad is a very, very small population. Chinatown here, the Chinatown in Atlanta is very, very small. Okay. So uh, the, the, the Asian gangs that you usually see would be like either the third world countries. There'll be the Vietnamese, the Cambodians, the Laos, the Laos gangs, right? And, and we networked with each other as well, you know, because sometimes we needed a band together as well. Um, but uh, yeah, we didn't really run into a lot of the triads like that. Um, yeah, I'm just curious because I mean, I, I know that their concentration is in, is in like LA, or I'm sorry, is in California and New York, but I was just wondering. If right. Any- and plus, I mean, the difference with the triads too is the triads basically kind of like just went over their own people. Like, the, like you know, the, like these tongs, they would like, basically feed off of their own people you know they would extort from chinatown you know they're not going out there extort doing extortion on walmart you know what i mean Uh, so like but with us we didn't have that so literally we had to kind of carve out our own niche you know what was that uh well we we also had like uh we did some extortion too as well uh but it was like you know burglaries robberies stealing cars uh and this is how old are you I was like 14, 13 years old. I mean, I I probably True. was familiar with a gun in my hand by the age of 12, you that. know? Uh, like I said, like my juvenile record was probably like 30, 40 burglaries that they finally decide to just condense into just one when I turned the day after I turned 17 and was charged as an adult, you know? And then it was, it was just, it was extensive, you know? And it was, it was kind of like sloppy. You know what I mean? It was right. like smash and grab. We would literally take a sledgehammer to the front of a business, run in there and grab a stuff. I mean, we were not really coming up on like some really, really big money. You yeah. know what I mean? But it was the fact that like, you know, we're young kids and, and. I was going to say, listen, eight, eight VCRs at, you know, 50 bucks a piece split between a few guys is 150 bucks a piece. You know what I'm saying? 150 bucks to a 14 year old is a lot of money. It you don't absolutely have any bills. was. And the thing is funny is cause like my group, my crew, we would literally go to church's chicken, get an eight piece box and each person would get a, a piece of chicken and a bowl of rice. And that's how we, we would, you know, we would sum our money together and AP boss church's chickens back then was like five ninety nine, you know, and we could feed the whole crew. But, um, but definitely, yeah, we were drugs, uh, I, even in Atlanta now, I mean, if you go looking up the, the, the line of like, hey, the bot from the from the user going on up, who he gets it from and gets it from, somewhere on that line, somebody's going to deal with a slant-eyed person. Right. You know what I mean? Because in Georgia, they, they, they're they coming in at the top. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, and I know lots of them, like a lot of black guys that I know, like, yeah, man, my, my plug is... I, I I fucks with you Asian guys, you know what I'm saying? You know, but as an Asian, I always felt like, you know, they say the term model minority or whatever. With white people, I feel like we're tolerated. You know, we're we're looked at that as like non threatening, right? Right. And uh with with black folks, we look as looked at as easy victims. You know, so to me it was always kind of like a, a fitting in. So really we just fit in with each other. You know, yeah, I was going to say, like, I, whenever I think of, um, you know, Asian, you know, crime, I, I always like I don't think of smash and grabs. I think of more sophisticated crimes because a lot I mean, it well, that's let, let me backtrack. That's not necessarily true. It, it's more more complicated crimes. Like right? like like they'll go like I, I did a whole research thing like on the. Uh, on an Asian crime group and it was, a, they were triads. Uh, it was a member of the triad. And I mean, it was, they were staking out manuf- uh, uh, computer chip manufacturing plants, staking them out. They're getting all the employees they've got. They've got when they come, the go, they go, the shifts, how many employees are there. They'd watch it for a week or so. And then they'd come in, zip tie everybody, steal 10,000, you know, computer chips, put them on a, a couple of vans that they'd rented, move them and then go sell them for $2 million. Like these were 
big time. Well, deep, well you're also you know, saying the triads, right? So right. we're you know we're talking very organized. Yeah, you know, organized crime. That's, maybe that's and, better. And they also uh, have example of organized resources as well, right. right? Whereas we are literally a street gang, you okay. know, like uh, our 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 organization was not like as defined and as right. and as you're a, young yeah we're young you're we young didn't kids. have that like you know chain of command like 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 it was now definitely you know we had our respect and that's the only thing that nobody could take right. from us well you that's know also I mean? kind of what you were you were going for that's too. the only like thing you're, that's, you're just trying not to be a victim that, that's all it is it's right. trying not to be a victim but in that to not to be one you had to earn the respect Right. right. So it was like an every day of earning that. Uh, so it was just kind of like a little different. And plus, you know, with the Chinese that, you know, they 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 they're within their community. You know, we are not we are an outsider within a community. You know, right. they they are the leaders or the, the feared of their community, whereas we are we are not we're we're we are just one corner of of a community that really doesn't isn't even ruled by us right you know i mean honestly i mean let's be honest i mean the pro the projects are ruled by the african-americans you know right. what i mean it's just that we weren't going to be victims of it, right you but know if you I mean? didn't group together then you guys are prey because you're walking around by yourself and so you need to be a group yeah, yeah we had right, to have right. it's yes i was gonna say we we interviewed a guy uh, ye uh yesterday with the um the new york guy yeah the yeah cop? Yeah, they were because they were all that was a it was a it was like you said it was an organized there was an organized um, Chinese run um, group that was stealing cars, you know, and and working with other not they're not just working with just Chinese like they're right. they're branching out to black guys to you know um, to other uh, Asians to Hispanic guys like whoever they're branching out and taking the cars and then shipping them back to China. It was super interesting. No, there's, it, it's no difference than the regular Chinese now who like their manufacturing now, Vietnam does most of the manufacturing for China. Right. We thought Chinese labor was cheap. Vietnamese labor is even cheaper. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, they are, they're very smart in that way. You know, uh, Chinese people definitely know how to use other, not, to, I wouldn't even just say Chinese. I would just say first world Asians. Yeah, and, and 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 it's funny because a, a buddy of mine, he's Korean, like he hates black people, but he his all his business is feeds off of them. Like he makes go grills, and he right. you know like you know he feeds off of them to for his income, but internally he he hates them. Right, you know what I mean? And it's like um. But yet they understand, like, hey, this is where the money is. This is how to yeah. get it, and they're just a lot. They're just they're a still lot gonna, they're still going to deal with who they have to deal with. They're right. not saying no. We'll only deal with our kind. Right. They're saying I'll deal with anybody as long as I make money. Right. That's the thing about like like China. Like China's extremely capitalist oh, at, the, yeah. at this point. You know, no doubt. You know, and it's under the guise of communism. You know, but really, they're they're uh, they're definitely running a, a capitalist uh, system. I, I mean, even the Vietnam War, I believe, was all based off of heroin. I mean, a lot of people have all these political views about it. But if you talk to the people in Vietnam, you know, they talk about the Golden Triangle. Yeah. The Golden Triangle basically. To fund the war somehow. Right. Well, the Golden Triangle basically was the area that was fertile for opium. Right. You know, yeah. and and the, the Chinese wanted South Vietnam's land. You know, and because and, and that, you know, uh, export, you know, or export import, you know, they wanted that product. Yeah. And because South Vietnam was a French province, you know, a, a French um, territory, I guess. So they backed up the north to take over, you know, and then America steps in to back up the French, you know, and then all hell breaks loose. And, you know, they, and, you know, they and and. You know, politically, they say this and this and that, but technically, I mean, it, it, I'm gonna say, isn't it funny? It's funny, like all all these wars that are going on, these micro wars, these you know, the proxy wars that are going, like, like it's it, they've been going on forever. They're never gonna stop. They're always gonna be going on. It's just never, you know, there is no like World War One was like the war to end all wars. It was the last you know war. It was going to stop, bro. Like twenty five years later, they're fighting again. They're fighting another war here. Then another one. Like it's never gonna stop. Well, the problem with it is, I always said that, like, um, you know, Genghis Khan, Hitler, uh, Napoleon, all these guys, Alexander the Great, 
had they were able to take over the entire world and really just conquer the world, we would all be under one government. They, we, they would have, we wouldn't have missiles to point at anybody because we would all be one. So nobody was the 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 failure in humanity is that we we developed the technology to destroy ourselves before we were able to band as a species. Yeah, I think that's that's my say. You know, because had we had let's say Hitler won, even though that sounds atrocious. You know what I mean? Like God, well, I'm, of course I wouldn't want that. But let's say Hitler won. Then the entire globe would just be Germany. Yeah. And there, yeah, the, the, the government would suck, but it would be one government. We wouldn't be sitting there fighting against each other because they would, we would just be against each other. You know what I mean? It would probably be some civil things, but it's still all in one government, you know? Uh, and that's, that's the problem now is you, you're dealing with all these feelings and, you know, helping this person out and helping this country. And, and it's just too many countries getting in other people's business. Is what it is. A lot of times it's like, why is America even there? You know, I mean, right. why was America even in Vietnam? You know, like uh, one of the statistics for Vietnam, for the Vietnamese War, is there's more American soldiers lost in the Vietnam War than World War One, World War Two, and the Korean War combined. Mm. You know, for what? Yeah. For this say. little strip of land that you have like no care about. You know what I mean? Like, why were you even there? You know, Um but, you know, a lot of things about that even like opens my mind because I'm from South Vietnam. So I'm considered like, you know, I've always kind of held like some kind of resentment to the North. You, I, you always felt like they took over. But in the history books over there, Ho Chi Minh, which was the leader of the North, you know, he's he's in their history books. Like he's like a hero. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like, the victors he, write the, yeah, he, 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 write he, the history. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's all about perspective. Right. And wouldn't I be as a Vietnamese person, shouldn't I be like. Hey, you know what? I should be proud that I'm, I come from a lineage of warriors that took down America. Like who else did? Look at all the resources of, you know, Russia and, and China and Japan. They could they take down America. But yet this itty bitty little bitty country took them down. Because why? Because they didn't they didn't believe in rules. I mean, they did like fucked up shit. Don't get me wrong. You sign you sticks of dynamite to an eight year, eight year old kid. That's some, that's some fucked up shit. Right. You know what I mean? But that's where the, the term guerrilla warfare came from. You know? Did you ever see, um, I mean, I, I know we're getting off topic. Full Metal Jacket? No, I was thinking uh, Apocalypse Now. No, I've never oh, seen bro, that. Bro, you've never seen, seen, seen it. Have you ever, uh, Cole, I know, I'm not even talking to Cole. <laughs> I know, oh, my, you've got to see Apocalypse yeah. Now. Like, it's it's just brutal. Marlon I mean, Brando, right? Marlon Brando. And at the end, he, he talks about what convinced him that he, he had to start basically he had to take on the war himself and stop being confined by the guidelines that America was imposing on him to fight that war and he and what 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 convinced him of it was they had gone into the Americans had gone into a village and they had vaccinated what they thought was a good thing we're going to vaccinate all the children and the um Vietnamese came in I want to say it was the Vietnamese they they came in and they chopped the arms off of all of the children that had been vaccinated, you know, because they, they gave them the vaccination right, on. Yeah. And he said, when we came back a week later, there was a pile, like a three, four foot pile of hundreds of little baby arms. They said, little baby arms. And he said, I knew right then the discipline that it took to chop those children's arms off. We could never win. If we continue to fight based on the based on the, the the parameters that were being put on us, and so he took his own group of of uh, of uh, Vietnamese, and they started fighting their fighting their own guerrilla war, and now the United States sends somebody in there to kill him, right. even though he's being effective. So because you uh, have to fight fire with fire, right? right? And and the, and the Americans they wouldn't do they it. couldn't do it. They That's the problem is that the Americans were stuck with rules of engagement, right? Right. And okay, for example, like the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Right. You everybody's heard of the Ho Chi Minh Trail. The Ho Chi Minh Trail was how the North got their supplies into the South. Right. Right. And the, the U.S. would new. I mean, would like napalm, and I mean, it was all things about this Ho Chi Minh Trail. But if you look at the Ho Chi Minh Trail, the Ho Chi Minh Trail actually goes into Cambodia, goes into Laos, because North Vietnam didn't give a fuck about these invisible lines that, right. like, you know. And and if you actually looked at the the supplies, they're literally in plain sight. 
but it's right. in Cambodia. So the U.S. can't go in there and blow up that supply depot. Yeah, you're fighting with rule. You're fighting. You're constraining yourself with rules, and the other party doesn't have any. Doesn't have absolutely you're not no gonna rules. Win. Well, I mean, and 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 it's always been known that Ho Chi Minh was a big fan of like uh, the art, the art of war. You know, he was a real yeah, yeah. big studier of the art of war, and he understood his enemy. I mean, even do you know what the art of war is? Sin Tzu, Sin Tzu, man, uh, was a uh, you know whether he's a was a real uh, Japanese uh, Japanese Chinese 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 general. Like there, I, I've saw, seen things that like. What they think he some of them think he was real some think it's a combination of a couple different people and he wrote the book called the art of war which honestly like to this day they use they still use it's got these really simple principles like you've that, heard divide and conquer divide and conquer yeah. is since yeah if you're if you're a large you know if what is it um if you're equally matched fight if you're not equally matched evade if you're more if you're you know um larger than your enemy you know fight like he's got all these rules if you're small be nimble if you're large be you know he's all these different rules for the art of war and people use it in business um and and, and, and he actually looks at it like like a chess set like a chess board right i mean you do have sacrificial pawns that kid holding that eight stick of dynamite is a sacrificial pawn to him you know what i mean it's just a weapon to use to destroy this tank right right now and they, they they understood propaganda, like you know during Vietnam they would broadcast the North would broadcast on on a radio for black soldiers saying this is not your war we're not here to fight you yeah. look at the the people they're putting you guys on the front lines they don't care yeah. about your yeah. life they're they're trying to separate that, that, they know there's the, a there's a problem there separate them divide and conquer yeah divide and conquer right yeah. and it's uh I mean even it goes down to the very last day which is the the Tet Offensive. Everybody yeah. heard of the Tet Offensive. Now, Thut is how you pronounce it. Thut means uh, New Year's, right? So the whole thing about the Tet Offensive was the U.S. wanted to have a ceasefire with the North. Right. So they were going to have like this, hey, we're going to have this big, because right. it's a very big thing. Thut in Vietnam was a very big right. thing. And they so, totally didn't see it coming. Like they're Right. Like, they were like, hey, we're going to shake hands, sign this document that we're going to have this ceasefire yeah. that this day we're going to celebrate and, and everybody well, and everybody's going to be good. So guess what? The American soldiers went out there and got drunk and hammered and, you know, thinking it's a free day. The North comes rolling in in tanks right on, yeah. right on Thut. You know what I mean? Over, overwhelming. Like, which is, which is one base after another is being overwhelmed. Right. Being overrun. This one's overrun. This one's overrun. And then it, it becomes a cascade effect. Like, you just can't stop how many are going. Right. And that's that's the day that the, the U.S. had to pull out. Yeah. And, and it's just like, why would you even, like, honor a document from a guy that signs it that literally was tapping a dynamite to an eight-year-old kid? Yeah. You know, like, what, what would make you believe that what anything that this guy says He's not. He's using anything. He understands that he's going up against. It's it's like Mike Tyson's punch out. You know, your your little Mac up there trying to fight Mike Tyson. You know what I mean? He is going to use any and every opportunity that he can to get one leg up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was and, gonna say you had um you had a uh, 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 Hitler which had consistently broken agreements and then you have chamberlain comes in who was the uh he was like the prime minister of uh england he comes in signs a document with hitler promising like hey we're gonna have peace and, and there he's like absolutely absolutely he's broken every agreement he signed for the last five <laughs> years and they're like they come back and they're like the 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 english are hailing him as like oh you got this signed it's great it's wonderful and even he knew like this is bullshit. Like this guy's never going to. And within months, he invades. Uh, he he invades. Um, within months, I think what, he Poland he invade, or Denton? No, I think he already had done that. So I think it was in within months he invaded uh, uh, France. Okay, you know. So it was like. I mean, it, it's just like this. Like, why would you ever honor any any handshake or any deal well, with your enemy? Well, well, and even well, maybe you could, but with somebody who's consistently proven he will not hold his, it'd be like signing an agreement with Putin. Like, you're you're consistently lying to to us and not honoring your agreement. Like you, so it's like, how do you deal with a bully? Bullies only they only respect strength. It really kind of goes back to the exact same thing of forming a small gang. Why? Because these people won't respect me without strength. Right. Because you know? I could fight every day by myself and I'll get that little bit of respect. But if you don't ever get some wins in there, you know what I mean? Right. You're, you're still going to be looked at as a victim, right? So, I mean, yeah, I mean, 
they came over and they, they took over. So like my parents had to deal with the aftermath of that, you know, like literally taints coming in and this, this is no longer your home, you know, like the, you're out on the street. And so there was a lot of people who escaped and they were political refugees and a lot of countries, the Vietnamese people are actually dispersed very globally all over the world. Uh, I think France took in a whole, there are a lot of Vietnamese people in mm -hmm. France because France felt like it was, you know, it their, was their former colony, yeah, it was right? former colony, right? And that's how there's a lot of Catholicism in Vietnamese culture because the French, the French brought in Catholicism to uh, to South Vietnam, and um, also a lot of French culture with the, the iced coffee and, and things like that, uh, the beignets, and and and. Um, Bro, you have to watch Apocalypse Now. I'm so fucking disappointed. <laughs> I'm going to send you the trailer. I I know the movie. I definitely, I definitely will. You would check love it out. the movie. I, I never knew that it. it was about the Vietnam War, though. I just knew that Marlon Brando was I'm in almost it. positive it's about the Vietnam War. I hope it's not about the Korean War. No, I feel like it's about the Vietnam War. It has to be because Vietnam War is when it's like when you're talking about like the atrocities. You know what I mean? Like talking about crazy. And they, they're stuff. talking about Cambodia in it, and they, they, it's 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 got to be because Cambodia was run by the Khmer Rouge too. By the time, like they no, were it's definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely <laughs> Vietnam. Is it Vietnam? Okay, it's Vietnam. I knew yeah. it. Okay, got me second guessing myself. And then also, like you got to look at like the soldiers. Like how do you how can you pick out your enemy and your ally when they both look exactly the same? You can't. Like you know what I mean? Like so, a kid comes running towards your tank. Is that an innocent kid yeah. or is that kid strapped with dynamite? Now you have to make that decision, right? Now you're forever going to have to live with blowing a little eight-year-old kid's head off. Right. You know, you have to live with that. You know what I mean? And and that's why these, these Vietnamese are veterans that are back. Like they're so screwed up. You look at, you know, when, when we won World War II, it was such this huge celebration. Like that whole, I always think of that portrait. I always think of that portrait that they have of, um, that uh, sailor kissing that nurse in the yeah, middle yeah, yeah. of New York City, right? Like it was a celebration when when that war ended. But when when war uh, when Vietnam War, we had so much political unrest here. With, you know, with the, the rallies, like a lot of people were feeling like they were sending sons over there that weren't coming back. You know, for a meaning a meaningless war right. to them. Which well, I think it's different too. In the United States, comes back from World War Two. It, nothing's happened in the United States. You know, when World War II ended for Europe, like it's devastated. Right. Like, so do they feel like, woohoo? Like they might be like, yeah, great. Now we have to rebuild our entire country. But, like they're in a different spot. Yeah. The great thing about the U.S. is just where we're, where we're located. Yeah. But you, you know, yeah. I mean, you're literally separated by the Atlantic and the Pacific. It's not that easy to kind of reach out and touch us. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When, when Japan did Pearl Harbor, that was kind of really the first time somebody ever reached out and touched it. And look how, how, how we responded to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, honestly, if they would have just nuked North Vietnam the very first time, they would probably end it just that quickly too, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, like that's why everybody feels so some type of way about 9-11. Because some, that's somebody reaching out and touching us on our ground, like, and you know, I was, I was actually in prison when the news of nine eleven broke out. I remember that I was in my little computer class, you know, because uh, internet wasn't really even out like that back yeah. then. Um, but I was seeing and, and first saw the the first plane hit, and we thought it was, I thought it was an accident, you know what I mean? And then it was going out, and I could remember even as prisoners how angry we were. You know, like people were like, dude, like, screw this. Uh, you know, I'll put a, put a gun in my hand. Let's go. I will go to war right now. You put me on the front lines. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, a lot of people hate Americans, but I always say you hate us because you, because you ain't us. And I've gotten a lot of perspective over, over the years. And don't get me wrong. I love and I'm an American. I represent America. I'm a citizen. I'm a citizen. You know, uh, I represent this country, you know. But uh, yeah, so I was I was I was very angry uh, about that when when that went down. So um, let, let's go, let's get back to so did you you ended up you were talking about burglaries and stuff, right? And eventually it caught up to you. It did. It caught up to me. Like I said, the the day after I turned seventeen, and in Georgia, uh, the at seventeen years old, you're considered as an adult. Okay. So technically, I couldn't even buy cigarettes yet. But I could be tried as an adult, right? Okay. So, but they kind of gave me a slap on the rip. They they kind of com combined it at all and gave me this the ninety day boot camp thing, which I went to West Georgia boot camp, which is like a, a prison boot camp. You're not like an actual like military, but it's run in a very military style, 
Right. You know, we exercised and marched and, and all that stuff. So I did, I did that. I got out 90 days. Right. But then I went right back into doing exactly what I was doing before, you know, uh, I was gang member still, and now I'm a little bit older, you know? Uh, so I just got right back into that again and, you know, living the life of, you know, hustling, you know, um, selling drugs, uh, little small money here and there. It's nothing like big and organized. But the funny thing you had mentioned about those cars, um, we had one of my, one of my members actually went out and visited a friend in New Jersey. And he came back with the master key to, uh, uh, they were Camrys, Toyota Camrys back in 1986. And you could stick this key into the Camry and, and it would unlock any Camry and it would work in the ignition. So we just made copies of those keys. So literally whenever we needed a ride to go somewhere, we, we would go walk to a parking lot, look, look for a Camry and we would be gone. It was just, and we were bad about it. We were literally playing bumper cars with these things. Like we didn't care about the, uh, the these cars, but but I remember that one of my buddies ended up getting incarcerated with one, right? And in there, they were, he, he came across like some kind of like, like, they took him down to like the, um, I guess, what they say, they take you into the precinct or whatever to, to, for questioning. And he came across a paper that they said that, the number two car that's most stolen in Georgia happened to be Toyota yeah, yeah. Camry. You know? yeah, that's exactly what the guy yesterday said. That that's it. He said like he had like three cars that were like you know they weren't super expensive. That, oh, yeah. But he said there's tons of them, so they always need parts. So they're people are stealing them, and they're easy to steal. He said they're not difficult to steal. So yeah, he said that was the number one. When we got that, that was a game changer for us because before <laughs> then we had to do the dent puller and all that. I don't know how you, you, you ever like, like hot wire, you know, you see the hot wire in your cars yeah. and all that. Well, basically what you do is you, you know what a dent puller is? It is, it's what the, the device that you twist and you can yank, you yank out the dents in the car. Right. And like, it would, it would have like a little nail right. that you could screw into it and then you pop that dent out. Right. Well, you would screw in that nail right into the ignition switch okay. and you basically just pop the whole entire ignition out. And from there, you could work your magic to start a car. What was the, what was the guy? What is it? You remember the guy we interviewed that he he was doing? They were doing it in New York, and he had a name for that the the ignition whatever. Bop bop bop. And he said you, that, you snap it right out. And that well, we, it was the dent puller. <laughs> That's what it was. That's what, we called it exactly what it was. You know, the the thing. Believe it or not, the thing that would deviate us the most was the the club. You remember the stupid club, the weird steering wheel club? If a car had a steering wheel club on it, you were safe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a buddy who broke into a guy's car who had a club and he brought he brought um like a saw yeah no uh whatever yeah it was a saw but it was um a, a, like a hacksaw a, a hacksaw thank you it's a little tiny hacksaw not a big one but that you know you can get them where they grip right where they they grip the uh thing and it so you're actually it looks like a saw yeah had a couple ways and he said so i sat it was i think it was a, like a corvette okay. he said i'm sitting out there sawing and sawing and i'm halfway through the saw is the guy comes out of the house, runs out and just pulling on the door. He's in an eye. He goes, and I go, what'd you do? He's like, I kept sawing. He's like, I'm like, like what do you mean? He said, bro, he's like, what am I going to do? I, mean, I got to get through this thing. He goes, what am I going to do? Op oh, you got me? Open the door. He goes, this fucking guy is huge. So he said, he saw, saw he said, so I mean, I was making progress. I'm he's sure like, that thing would have took like half an hour to get through this. <laughs> he said, finally, I, he's like, like, the guy like ran in the garage. You could tell he's calling the police. I snap it. I boom. I start the car. He jumps on the fucking hood. He's like, he said, he said, look, if he had grabbed like a hammer and smash the window. He goes, but it was his car. <laughs> He's like, so he backs out with the guy on the fucking thing. He starts driving. He stops it a couple of times. Eventually the guy comes off, gets off the hood and he takes off. Wow. And he's like, I fucking, he's like, I've never been so scared in my entire life. And you know, believe it or not, on the side note of that, it's just, even if we didn't take the cars, you know how many like, firearms and things like that that we got from glove compartments stereo equipment like just things that these are these are ways that we were making money as 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 young little kids right you know what i mean um and like i said we we i we robbed we robbed people you right you know what i mean uh people that we knew that like dealt with like cash businesses or dope dope boys, say. Dope boys yeah. you know what i mean and for you to do that you know that you they gotta got, be prepared. Yeah, they might yeah, have, yeah, they yeah, probably yeah. have a gun. You yeah. gotta be prepared, you know. And um, but yeah, we 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 were known to we we were we were pretty pretty bad back then, <laughs> you know. Um, how did that? What 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 happened? Um, 
So how old were you at this point? Like this is after high school, right? This has got to be. No, I, I had joined my gang when I was probably about like 12. 13. No, no. I, I mean, after you went, you went to prison. You well, did the boot camp. I did the boot camp. I came out of the boot Got camp. Got out. Right? You said you were still a knucklehead. You're still, still doing still crazy out doing all shit, that stuff. Right? Still out there doing all that stuff. And then what happened, which leads into my second time I get incarcerated. So my gang or my crew were, they were going down to Florida for the weekend to to party or whatever. And three of us couldn't go. And one reason I couldn't go is because I was still under probation <laughs> off the other stuff. So like, uh, I think four of us stayed behind and they told us like, look, hey, don't go to the clubs. Don't go out. You guys are only a few of you guys here. You know what I mean? But, you know, back then we, I felt like I was invisible. And if you're telling me not to go somewhere, it means I'm scared and I'm, I'm not going to be scared to go out. Right. You know what I mean? So what, and, and back then in, the, in Atlanta, the Asian culture wasn't like as fused as it is now. Like now when we go to the clubs, there's a mix of all kinds of races in there. You know, white people, black people, Asian people, everything. But back then, they used to have what were called Asian parties. So people would rent out a venue and throw a party just for Asian people, right? Okay. So, but this is where the gangs would converge, right? So then I remember we went to Club Soul, it was down in Midtown Atlanta, and it was just four of us, you know? And we went in and there was an altercation within, within the club, right? And, you know, we threw down in the club. Uh, got out and got went to the car, and as we were driving away, Is, who's the altercation with? Uh, a rival gang. Okay, yeah, it was a rival. And it's gang. not you in, in the altercation; it's somebody else within no, your gang. Uh, well, with what? one of us is, is is all of us, right? Right. So uh, one of us got into a fight in there, so we all we got into a fight in, right. within the club, right? And then after that, we you know got kicked out. So we got to the car, and as we were leaving, there were like four of them on the side of the sidewalk, I guess, going to their cars, you know? And at that point, I stuck my nine millimeter out of the window and I let go the entire mag, right? Uh, unfortunately for me, uh, there was a police in the vicinity. So there was a police on the scene within three minutes of the, cause he could, he heard the gunshots, right? You know, so it was a police on scene within three minutes. So there was an APP out for a red Honda Civic within like five minutes. We made it maybe four blocks away. You know what I mean? Uh, and come to find out that they were like stopping any hot red hunt, any red car. I mean, there were other people that got guns drawn on them that had nothing to do with anything. But anyway, like we got pulled over and literally surrounded by like probably like 15 cop cars. And you, you didn't get rid of the gun. You've got the gun. No, we absolutely did get rid of it. Oh, okay. you know, <laughs> we did get rid of it. Um, but uh, like I said, it's completely surrounded. I mean, guns drawn and like, um, you know, hands up and getting down and, and all that jazz. And um, so then they, they put us in the car and then they took me right back to the scene of the crime because there were still some people there. At the time, I didn't know if I had hit anybody yet. Right, I was wondering. Right? But I did, you know, but there were other ones that didn't, that were still there. Did you hit, the, did you hit one person? I hit or? one person okay. three times. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so he was already sent to the hospital. But the, the remaining people there were like, yes, they ID'd me. So immediately I go to Atlanta City Jail. You know, me and everybody that was in the car with me. You know, uh, so then from there, that was the stint of my second. Now, Atlanta City Jail is a completely different ball game because now you're talking, this is the inner city of Atlanta. This is like- Is ACDC? ACDC. Atlanta City Detention Center? I guess, yeah. I remember, I remember looking out my window and I could see Magic City, which is one of the- Yeah, it's, it's like a tall, tall yeah, building. Yeah, tall, tall building. Yeah, I was there. Oh, right. you say, yeah, if you're yeah. familiar, right? Well, I was in the, the Marshall's holdover area, so it's just for the Fed, so. Oh, uh, okay. Well, no, I went into, you know, they obviously no bond on, on that charge. Uh, so they they take me into Atlanta City Jail, but then they ended up having to bound my case over to Superior Court because they couldn't handle it in the city because it was such a- a bigger, it's a more a serious, more serious crime. crime yeah so this is when i go to fulton county jail right now fulton county jail is everybody knows it as rice street mm -hmm. right now rice street it was probably the toughest time 
I had to spend because Rye Street had seven <laughs> floors. Have you heard of Rye Street before? Yeah, I have. Being an ACDC, like, it, like these are rough places, right? Because you're dealing, you're dealing with these are like the ghettos, like yeah. in, in Atlanta. You talk everybody in there is always. It's not even about what gang you're from. It's like where you're from. I'm from Fourth Ward, Bar Boulevard, Mechanicsville, uh, Perry Home, Carver Homes. These are all projects. You know, Mechanicsville is where Ti came from. You know, um, so. In there, that's they were repping where their neighborhood was, right? You know, but either way, all those neighborhoods didn't have it. Asian people in it, you know what I mean? And plus, I'm kind of outside because my hood is more College Park, so I'm I'm in Clayton County is where my hood is, so I'm not even in like my my stomping ground, I guess right. you would say. So Rice Street at that time, I think they've changed it now, but back then Rice Street had seven floors, so the top floor was like the hole, right? The sixth floor was where your PC or like, uh, I guess at the time, transgender people, stuff that people need protection would go to. And then the fifth floor was like the Thunderdome. The fifth floor was the violent crime floor. And then it worked its way on down, you know? And you're there for attempted murder? I'm there for attempted murder. So I am on the fifth floor and I'm in, I'm, I'm, it, I'm telling you, I'm crazy as shit. Like I'm literally sitting here watching the news and on the news, it was, I remember it was the Didi. And there was this couple, this guy and a girl who like killed some girl, some lady and chopped off her head. And they found the body, could never find the head, right? And I'm watching this on the news. The door pops open and fucking Didi walks in. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, oh, wow. Now, the thing is, you know, like I said, Asians, we're looked at as, um, as by black people as victims, you know? So, I probably got into more altercations in the time that I spent on that fifth floor of Rice Street than I have my entire life as a gangbanger in the years I spent in prison afterwards. You know what I mean? Like that kind of is really where I learned how to fight. <laughs> yeah, I, Cause I was constantly having to prove myself. I, I can remember like the first week in there, I went to a store call, right? So the officer's at the door handing out store. I make a $50 store call. I'm walking back to, to my room with my, my bag. And, um, uh, his name was Jones, big tall guy, came up to him and was like, hey, let me get that. And I was like, oh, you're hungry? You want a honey bun? I mean, I'm still a little green around the yeah. ears, you know? I put my bag down and he's like, no, I want that whole thing. Now, my right. whole thing is I got to do it. It's like this. Don't think. If you think, you're going to talk yourself out of it. Right. I don't think. I just react. So I punch him right in the face. You know what I mean? His buddy kicks me in the back. I go into the fetal position. They're stomping me out. Officers at the door still passing out store calls. Right. You know what I mean? It's called, we call it the goldfish bowl. They had like a little tower up top that they sat that they could look down. It was like six different uh, units yeah. that they could look down on, you know? And like, it was not, like, well, nobody does. You know, they'll probably up their place in bets, you know? Um, but yeah, that was like my first understanding of like, you know, hey, this is going to have to be a regular thing right. because. Because be being that a fact that it was a county jail, I mean, it was like a revolving door. Yeah. You know, like people were getting sentenced and, and moving out. So new people were coming in. So new people come in, immediately see victim. You know what I mean? So, I'm, I mean, I'm constantly proving myself. I mean, I, I at least got into one or two fights a week. Now, I can remember one guy that, that definitely took me under his wing. His name, he was a Mexican dude. His name was uh, Montana. Right. right. And he was a Golden Glove boxer. And he, used to, he came up to me and was like, hey, man, you know, you you want to like work out and try to teach you some things like that you know what i mean i guess he kind of felt bad maybe i was just getting my ass kicked a little too much because back then as a game where you thought you really knew how to fight but you're just really not you're just really trying to throw punches with no kind of really technique to it right you know what i mean but like i said if you're willing to fight the you won right because yeah. at least you chose you're not scared but then he started showing me boxing moves you know like we, we would take the matches roll it up put it in the pillowcase and hold it and, and start showing me how to stand how, and you know I'm, I'm doing it just as an exercise thing but then as i'm fighting i noticed that like it's just started to come naturally with it and i'm starting to get better you know so i really really learned how to fight then because i will tell you growing up as a gangbanger i'm fighting other boys right it's completely different game when you're fighting a grown ass man as a ch as, as a young yeah. boy yourself you know what i'm saying it's it's a completely different ball game you know what i mean and 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 everyone you have to take seriously 
you know, and then and then even after the fight, you still living with this guy. Still, you still gotta kind of yeah. keep your eye. It's the worst. It's the worst thing. Like, yeah, this a, so you you gotta kind of learn how to somewhat coexist. You, you earn that respect, and then you gotta somehow squash it out at some point. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like even that guy Jones, we ended up being really cool. Like weeks later, after you know his shiner went away, you know what I mean. <laughs> but he never stole my stole girl from me again. Right. You know what I mean? But I mean, he probably spreads the word like, listen, that dude a fucking swing. I mean, it wasn't even a spread of word. It was a literally like in the day room. I mean, I didn't even make it back to my room. Right. Like, I was probably about 15 feet away from the from the door from the store call. You know? Uh, but you know, it wasn't it wasn't the it wasn't the last time that my stuff got stolen. Right. You know what I mean? But once again. You got to go out and it, it, it could be over the most like simplest thing. I was I was telling you earlier, like, you know, out here we have what is like a man code, right? That we got to live by. You're going to have to, you know, you can treat me with a certain amount of respect as a man, right? right? But in there you have the convict code, you know, which is like, you know, stitches get stitches and all that stuff. Right. But it was more like all you had was your respect. So the littlest thing would force you to have to go into an immediate confrontation. Yeah, I was going to say, like, here, like, you know, out here, like, you're not going to get into a fight if over over a $3 item that that, that guy over there might have stole, or he didn't return it. He says, man, I'm sorry I lost it, bro. It's like, fuck, what's four bucks? Whatever. Well, you've been in, I mean, but in prison. Oh, yeah. You'll die. Like, bro, that. what are you doing? Like, I can't let you fucking just I can't, you stole my shit. Because like, now it makes yeah. it looks like I, anybody if, else ever, anybody's going to do it, right? You can't, you can't do that. And like, even I don't know about you, but and uh, like, one of the biggest things is you can't reach over my food. Do not put your hand over my food. Right. Well, I, okay. So, state, you know, what I'm saying state and pens are are they have a lot of little rules. You oh, know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can't. In some of them, it's like you can't. You can't do even do business with like uh, somebody from another race. You can't sit at that table. Why? Because that's the black guy's table. Right. You can't sit there. Like, yeah, there's nowhere to sit with you. Fucking stand, or you wait till one of the white guys gets up, or you like that's in other like I, the prisons I were uh, was at weren't that bad. There was some of it, but it was more laxed. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? It's even like cutting line or going to a guy and going, "Hey, can I jump in line?" And the guys would be like, "Yeah, yeah, that's fine." Mm. And then. And then you go back and, and you know, some white guy would come to him and say, bro, you just cut line. And they're like, no, I asked the guy, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the line's 100 people. Like, it'll take me 10 minutes or, or 20 minutes to be in that line. They'll go, then you go, wait, you're going to get us in trouble. Yeah. You're going to get us, us in a problem because you just cut in front of that guy, even if he says it's okay. Well, it's even if he says okay, but is the other 99 people behind him right, okay? Right, right. Exactly. You know? So, no, you go stand back in the line. Right. You know, and or, you're, right. I'll give you an example. One of the things that I got in a fight with over a lot was somebody calling me an amigo. Hey, amigo. First of all, I'm not Mexican. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, no, 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 man. It means friend. Second of all, I'm not your friend. You know? And then now at that point, I've kind of laid it out on him. Either he's going to back down and look like, you know. Like you put him in his place. Right, or he has to step up to the bat. And right. if he does, then, hey, I have to step up to the bat too, right? right? And that's the most trivialest thing to get up. What about people out here saying bitch? Oh, bitch, you're crazy. <laughs> like, you know, that's like, I've never been anywhere with or, that. But out here they say it, like people will say it to each other. And it's son like. Son of a bitch. That, if you call my mom, what do you right. mean? That was, that was immediate so green light. Stupid. Stupidest, the stupidest thing. Yeah, guys don't fucking get in their fights. They're going out and they're going, they're putting their boots on and going Stra- and getting in shame. And when they put it's the boots like, on, what do they call it? They call it strap up. Right. <laughs> hey, it's time to strap up. So you know, stupid, over bro. the most trivialest thing. But it's because you only have that little bit of shred of respect that you have to like maintain, you know? And I'm not going to even lie, like being an Asian dude in prison, psh, you don't think how many people kind of came at me with that? fuck game right. you know what i'm saying like who wouldn't want to have them a nice little china doll right you know what i'm saying especially when i'm the only only asian in the entire camp and it's funny because when i when i went to that camp uh they 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 do their count system by black or white so even if you're mexican your kids said black or white they have right. uh, they have on the board how many black inmates they have how many white inmates they have right i refused to be labeled and they kept i mean they were on me on me on me i was like fuck you i'm not picking if you, you you if you pick you pick, but you asking me to pick, fuck you, I'm not picking. You so, know. What I mean? So you know you know if you go to like the BOP and you're looking somebody up, it only has like black and white. It like there's no Hispanic. No. it's black white. It, what what's race? Black white, male, female. That's it. That's your, those are your choices. And it's funny because the day that I got released, 
uh, I went through the outtake and I went past the office and they had like the chalkboard where the whiteboard where they had their count. They had black, white, and they had a fucking 3M sticky note. Other. Other. One. You can finally take that fucking sticky like, note down, motherfucker. Because that's me. <laughs> so so what? Ha- so how long were you? Um, I'm sorry. So what What happened? Let's go back to the. Okay. What, what happened? Like, what did they come to you with? Like, you just shot. You just hit a guy three times. Did he okay, die? So that, what happened? No, I hit him. I hit him in the leg three times. Okay. Okay. So I, okay, we kind of jumped around a little bit. Okay. Say, so you still die be, by being shot in the leg, by the way. Right. But yeah, he <laughs> you know did it. He did it. He, okay. he showed up. He showed up to, to court in a wheelchair. You know what I mean? oh. um, and that's how they passed on and, and, and indicted me to move me forward. But uh, I ended up spending uh, like three years in county waiting to go to, to trial. What are they offering you? Are they giving you an offer? Well, they- I finally got an offer of a 10 to 5 time served. Right after that. So I, I didn't even end up going to prison over that charge. But you had already done three I've years. Done three you years have done now, three right. years. I've done like, three years, yes. What, what do you mean 10 to, I don't understand. You so said it was 10. a 10 to five, basically is a 10 year sentence. You do five. serve five of it. Right? But you'd already served three. But I already so served three. So it's basically, yeah, they okay, let me okay. out straight from county. But they paroled me out straight from county, basically. Right. Um, so then that happens, right? So I'm out on the street now after this aggravated assault attempted murder right uh back into the same thing you know back meeting with my boys and everything and then this can't is, can't get right yeah, I, just, I just couldn't get it took it took a while like, for at, me at, at any point when you we were in prison did you think you know what i'm gonna get out and i'm working for fedex i'm done i'm gonna go work for fedex i'm gonna deliver packages um 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 or i or you know walmart like did you think were at any point while you were locked up saying this sucks I don't want to do this anymore. Fuck it. I would rather just work, you know, at, at Walgreens. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. There's no rehabilitation. No. Right? <laughs> what it taught me was it taught me how to be a better criminal. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Because you're in there with the best. Of course. Right? Yeah. And it also taught me that I'm not scared of this. Like I can survive in here. Like oh, that, that, I, that was the worst for me. That's too, because the problem. Cause you now you're not scared of fear, it. When, once you, it, the unknown was, what was, was, was scary. Once you went through it, you're like, Oh no, was this it, isn't that, that much bad. of a deterrent. Yeah. yeah. Like now I, I don't give a fuck about prison. Right. You know what I mean? So what? Like, you know, I've been there, done that. You know, now when I go to, if I ever went, if I'd rather much rather do prison time than county time because county oh, yeah. fucking sucks the guys the whole time you're in county you're like I, I there were guys that i kept hearing them say man i just want to get sentenced to go to prison it was oh. like and i was like pr- i always thought well prison's worse than this right and they were like fuck, fuck no, no. Fuck prison's no. way better than county fuck yeah county sucks i remember a guy was like he said you understand that i'll get there in the morning that night i'll be eating ice cream i mean he was i'm gonna it's, they're gonna count me i'm gonna go walk the track for about an hour or two, I might play handball. That night, I'll have somebody get me a, a an ice cream. I'll be taking a hot shower. I'll be, and, and you're sitting there going, like, I, I want to get sentenced. Like, yeah. I want to go to prison. But it's the unknown because you, you know you're watching these movies, and you know, of course, I I myself I'm not to say that I wasn't like nervous about going to prison. You right. know what I mean? Obviously, I was. You know what I mean? But once like once you've been down there and you understand and like. I, I was a rowdy kid. I was never scared to throw down. So, like, once you know that, like, you can earn that respect. Yeah, the freedoms down in prison is so much more. Like, you literally get out in the morning. You're out all day watching TV, yeah. gambling, You don't have, to ever have very little interaction with the police anymore. Yeah, very little interaction with anything. So, it's kind of like you're, 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 you're kind of left on your own to kind of do, do, do your time. You know, whereas in county, they're so like strict and it's all about control. And, you know, you, literally in Gwinnett County. Like you literally only got four hours outside of your room a day. So right. it's 20 hour lockdown. You know what I mean? Like, fuck that shit. I much rather go out here, like send me to Gen Pop. You know what I mean? Because I much rather have the freedom and not. And so what? A fight's a fight. <laughs> what the right. fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? Like? I, I was just thinking um, I was being transferred one time. So I'm being transferred. Like they put you on the bus. They, you know, they ship the bluebird. We call yeah. it the bluebird. So I got shipped from Coleman. I was going through uh, Atlanta. And you were in, you, you served time in Florida. Yeah. Well, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I got caught in, um, yeah, I got, I got caught in Nashville. And so I went from Nashville to like, um, I think, uh, was it 
Alabama, and then they they send you through like the Oklahoma City, like the transfer center. I was there for a couple of weeks, so I got moved around. But at one point from Coleman, I was going through uh, through Atlanta. But they, you know, they, you know, they bring the bus. You spend two days here, so then they bring you here two days here. Jackson? I, I no, I went to um. I this I remember this was um. Oh God, it was a Tallahassee, Florida. But what's so funny is they bring the bus in, right? So there's probably ten or twelve of us. They give us our our bedroll. And we're walking to ourselves. And it was late. It was like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And, but keep in mind, I've been locked up like nine, 10 years. No, I've been locked up. You know, I think I've been locked up about eight years at this point. So I'd already, been, I did three years in the medium. I'd been a, a year in the county jail. I was already at the low. Right. So I'm walking with my bedroll and there's a couple of guys behind me. But some of the guys that were around me, like they were still in tra- being transferred. They haven't right. been sentenced, nothing. They've barely been to, to even the county jail yet. They've been in a week or two, maybe a couple months. So as we're walking, and we're all from the low. So, but you know, well, we're low security, but these right. guys got picked up at the uh, at one of the um, U.S. Marshals holdovers. So they've really been designated, but they're low guys. So we're walking with the bedroll, and we go up on the second tier, and we're there, you know the cops were following the cop, and he's like, "Here, you know, Johnson, this is your room." So, but so as we're walking. This is criminal. These are these are fucking these are criminals. The guys, it's 11, 12 o'clock at night. The guys are at the windows. All the doors are locked. The guys are at the windows, banging on the windows. Put that one in here. Yeah. Put that one in here. Big fucking huge guys with tattoos. That one. I want him. I want him. And I mean, I swear the guys Fresh fish. That uh, fresh fish, fresh <laughs> fish. Guys behind me and in front of me are like, oh my God. Oh my God. And I go, you guys are fucking with you. We're in a low. This is a low holdover. <laughs> they're fucking with, they're fucking with you. I promise. <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, I don't think I can do this, man. I don't think I'm like, it's fine. They're fucking with you. I can't be in with one of these guys. I can't be that. It, re- it reminds you of uh, Shawshank Redemption, it right? And making Shawshank Redemption when it they does, used to make they bets. Were, but they were serious. You oh, know what I'm yeah. saying? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah the fresh, they're doing we're the we're bets. bets but, yeah. that, and I'm sitting there like laughing because I'm thinking I was so fucking. Of course, I was scared when I first got right. locked up. And I'm sitting there like, you guys, I'm. I swear to you these guys are fucking these guys are in the holdover this is a low security holdover so they're not going to put you you're a low guy right. they're not going to put you in with someone who's going to rape you or murder you or not at this level now that may happen later but at this level i promise you, you guys are fine right. and it's only because the next day when we came home came came out for um for breakfast like some of the guys were, were that were terrified were like bro my fucking cool he's my, my cell is so cool bro he <laughs> you were almost in tears last night <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it's a game, but yeah. it's it's a game and yet not a game, because they do test to see who's weak. Yeah, they, you know what I mean. A, this was a little trend. We were gonna be there for two days. Right. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's getting caught. There's commissary. Nobody's there, so it wasn't that bad of it. And you knew it. And I, and I listened. And I was 100 percent right. Like you're right. It could have gone the other way. Right. But it didn't. Like as soon as I walked in, like you know, there was like a the guy my, like my celly like you know got up and he was like, hey bro, what's up, man? Um, Look, I, I got my stuff here. Hold on, let me get my stuff off the bed. Like he's clearing his stuff off the bed. Like he's, you know, he knows. He's like, right. you know, he's he's in transfer too. He's like, look, we got to be in here together. Like let, let's. Yeah, you got you got you got to be cool with yourself. Yeah, because there are times you have to admit. So there are times you were in prison and you met some guys that were just off the chain cool guys, just oh, decent my squad. fucking guys. Yeah, right? you have to have your your. I mean, even regardless of a gang or whatever affiliation in, in prison, you got to have like I said, those guys that had your back that yeah. can look behind you. You know, where you can't see, you know, you have to have that close knit of, knit of friends. You know who takes care of you themselves? Like the Mexicans. Oh, yeah. When the Mexicans get there, you could be a Mexican, go into a unit and you walk in and they're like, yo, bro, where are you from? Boom, boom, boom. I got you. I got shower slides for you. I've got soap. I've got like they would have like a whole kit. And sometimes the white guys, some, sometimes the white guys would do it. The black guys never really did that for each other that I saw. And. Sometimes the white guys would do it for each other. They were such a small group, but the Mexicans would take care. I mean, like, bro, give me a list. I'm going to the store tonight. I'll send somebody to get your list. Like, it was like, like they were set up. But see, that comes at a cost. Oh, okay. It comes at a cost because now they just grew one more member of their numbers. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and yeah. now that guy owes He's them. He's expected That to... guy owes them. Right. So if now somebody, if they were to reach out and ask him a favor, he would now feel obligated Right to do what he's got to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I mean, everything comes at a cost. You know. Um, you know the the one of the big jokes of the 
I, and this never happened to me, but I, yeah, I've heard stories about you go into prison and then there's like the a bunch sticker. of cake, the cakes and stuff like that yeah, all yeah. on your bed. Yeah, the Snickers like, bar. Yeah, the Snickers bars and stuff like that on your bed. You better not eat that Snickers yeah. bar. You know what I mean? I, like, you think that's a gift? <laughs> I used to tell the guys would say, well, what's the difference between the medium and the low? I'd go, well, I said, you know, the thing, difference is that, you know, somebody puts a fucking Snickers bar and you're at a medium, don't eat it. Someone puts a Snickers bar on your pillow in the low, you can eat it. You'll be all right. Because that dude shows up and you'll be like, yeah, I ate the fucking Snickers bar. Fuck you. You don't want to go nowhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to fucking fight. You don't want to this. You know, you're playing around. But that's because you're willing to like, you know. Right. Yeah, but but the, it, he might try you like that. It was probably though, yeah. a joke though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Probably. Could be, yeah. Oh, I had, listen, I taught GED and I used to have, with Zach, and we used to have, I used to have a guy that used to bring us Snickers every once in a while and he'd go, hey, Cox, you know, like this with the Snickers. I mean, cut the fucking shit. So this went on four or five times for about a, a two or three weeks. Well, now I know who the guy, right. I kind of know. And I know, realize that he's not doing anything. Right. So one day I watched, he goes, Hey Cox. And I go, I said, damn bro. I snatch it out of his hand. I open it and I bite it. And he goes, what the fuck, man? Fuck bro. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> you cashed in that wolf ticket. Right. You put up, but, <laughs> but the first few times, like it was questionable. Yeah, is was he fucking question. with me? Because like, he's trying he... you up. He's testing you. It's right. All, it's all about testing right. and seeing where somebody's heart's at. And that's, and that's all it is. Like, even like me, like I said, as long as you're willing, like, there's so much easier to go to the next guy who's not going to be willing to buy right. than, than to even deal with it. You know what I mean? So like once you, once you get known to just like, Hey, this guy's just not going to, it's just not going to come easy. Right. Then they're going to leave you alone. And in prison, it was a lot easier than that because the revolving door wasn't as, you know, my rep, it was, it was big. The reputation w would, would be known more. It was just, it just, altercations happen because they just happen to happen not because somebody was intentionally trying to go after me or something like that you know what i mean but like and Wright Street, like I said, that was like a revolving door. It was like constantly like learning. I mean, I don't think I ever not had a bruise on me at some point in my body <laughs> at all times, you know? Um, but yeah, like even then, even in prison, it's like a code. Like, hey, let's take it to the room. There's no need for the police to know about this. So you never, but you never, on that charge, you you did all three years in the in county. county. Which was the, the hardest sucks. time, though, believe it or not. Yeah. But you'd rather than five years in prison than three years in the county. Absolutely. Because like I said, that, and it was weird because like I was in Rice Street for a year, right? And then they finally came up with a bond for me for that, for that charge. So I was thinking, oh, I'm going to post bond and get out. Well, Gwinnett County still had a hold on me from those burglary charges, right? So I didn't, I posted bond and just went straight to another county. Mm. And I'm like, well, at least at Gwinnett County, I didn't have to fight. Right. Week. You know what I mean? But I, that I ended up sitting in there yeah. for two years till I finally like went out to trial and like well I didn't go out to trial but we pleaded out and you know I, I got out. Yeah, that was I was say I'm sure you've heard this before. That that was a that was my my buddy of Zach. That was his thing was like he actually had new charges and they gave him a bond, but he he was on federal probation. So his federal probation had been revoked. So he's like, you know, all his whole everybody that knows him is like, why don't you bond out? Like your your bond is nothing. He's like, don't you understand? I'll bond out and I'll, as soon as I walk out the door, they'll pick me up and bring me to the federal fucking holdover and I won't bond out. Like I might as well stay here. You know, that happens all the time. Right. Like you've got outstanding warrants. They're like, bro, your bond's 10 grand for a grand. You can get out. No. Like if you haven't been through the system, you don't know how it works. Well, I, we, we bonded out because they, my family called up to the jail. It's like, Hey, does he have any kind of hold on him? Right. They said no. Right. So you did so bond they, out? They, they, they posted the bond. But then I never made it out because then the whole oh I thought you comes. knew and you want you wanted to be moved no oh okay uh, I mean I, I'm well you're in you're in I don't give a fuck what county <laughs> you know what I mean? like yeah it sucks that it was Rice yeah. Street all but still well you said the other one was better it, it wasn't necessarily no not necessarily better because Rice Street actually yeah I I got in a lot of fights but. You got free time. You open the doors open in the morning. You're out all day. You do what the fuck you want. Uh, you know what I mean? Whereas when I counted, you're locked down 20 hours a day in your room. Like I like I said, I'd rather be in Gen Pop. Yeah. You know? It's funny how different all the different facilities. Every facility is different. Yeah. Some of them will, will no commissary and they feed you like shit. Other ones, they feed you good and you've got great commissary and you're out and you're like, right. you know, then they've got, you know, multiple TVs. Other ones, they don't have any TVs and they don't have, it's like, Jesus, it's. It's one extreme to the to other. other. Yeah, some of them, and some of them won't even barely feed you the. Uh, um, they won't barely feed you enough calories to stay alive, and the, the food is 
crap and the other ones will feed you great like oh yeah you know, well, I, but federal it, prison wasn't horrible it wasn't bad food it federal time is actually easier time yeah. oh, it's just course. it's just that, state but they don't have the parole is the, the suck part of no, it what, like, the they, time they want the they time give out. they want the time it's yeah insane. they don't want the time and you're they, they can send you so far away right which with me they said i i okay well i get out on the uh the aggravates Right. I saw attempted murder charge and uh, get back into the same thing again. So, you know, and uh, we had recently just robbed some dope boys. So I had over like, a given a thousand ecstasy pills, you know, and so I got set up by an undercover. Right. <laughs> right away. You remember the restaurant Bennigan's? Yeah. Yeah. So this was probably. Are there still Bennigan's? No. Are but there? No, you didn't but back know. in 2000, there was. Oh, they were, they were everywhere. It's like Sizzler. Right? Yeah, it like, <laughs> like, like, Chili's, they're still Chili's, right? Like yeah, Chili's and chili. Bennigan's were like rivals. It's almost the same thing. Right. Bennigan's, yeah. So I, I remember that I, and the reason was weird because it was, uh, I got set up by a girl that I bought Coke from, you know? And I'm like, she couldn't be. I mean, she, she literally sells shit to me herself. You know right. what I mean? But um, so like I got set up as undercover and I was unloading like, a whole bunch of these ecstasy pills and back then they were just ecstasy pills it was not all this mdma and also this, this happened back in 2000 so um i end up and it was like we went into the bennigan's and he was like you know met him was up met him up he was like all right let's go out to the car make the deal you know and so we get in the car and like he's counting out the money and the next thing you know i mean like a, a van like literally blocks the back of the car and swats like jumping out and literally a helicopter is flying above the Bennigans, you know, and it's like full on, like on me, you know right. what I mean? And um, that's the third time I'm I incarcerated for uh, distribution, right? Uh, and sell. So then this is when I go back in to count. Is this federal? No, this okay. is still a uh, state, right? So then. I, I this I, that's when I would serve my 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 third term and my final term, right? But in between that time was when the incident happened at the TGI Fridays. Uh. Right. So in between that time, me and three other of my gang members, two of them happened to be brothers, uh, were with 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 our girlfriends were happened to eat happened to be eating at a uh, TGI Fridays, and the guy that I had shot happened to be eating at the same restaurant and he saw us you know but we never saw him mm -hmm. never had an idea he was there we were just eating and like he called up and like literally about 45 minutes into our meal we look outside and like there are like uh, there's a mob out there like 20 20 guys five six cars out there you know and um my guys they tell me like look you're already on parole for the you know, the attempted murder. Like, you and your girl need to just get in your car and leave. We got this. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm saying. Band of brothers, man. Like, really. You know what I mean? Uh, so we get out and, like, I'm parked, like, over here. And here's the restaurant. And they're parked, like, right up against the wall, the side of the restaurant. Like, my, my, my other, my other boys. Right. right? So like I'm getting in my car and I'm looking over there and I can already see them like having exchanging words with the other side. And these guys, they got like bats and, and shit too, you know? And they outnumber us like, you know, for four or five to one, you know? Um, so I see one of them like I guess get close and then my buddy's older brother hit, swings first. He hits that guy first. I mean, he's a college kid. He's got absolutely not, no gang affiliation at all. He was just out having dinner with his brothers and a couple of his brother's friends. But in the same breath, these are my little brothers. Right. And you're not going to sit here and just, I'm not going to just stand by and let you guys just, you know, beat them up or whatever it is. So when I saw that happen, I said, screw that shit. I hop out and I'm, I'm over there. I'm next to, you know, I'm fighting four guys. You know, and I, at the time, have a gun on me, but I'm not the type to be like, shoot first. You know what I mean? Like, I'm okay with like, hey, we could throw hands and I'm okay with that. You right. know what I mean? Um, but as I'm fighting these four guys, I hear gunshots break out, you know, and I don't really know if it's coming from my side, their side, you know, I start unloading my own shots, you know, 
uh, after the aftermath of that, because after the gun starts going out, it's basically everybody clears and they're hopping in their cars and, you know, everything's going on, that I see my my friend's older brother on the ground, you know. And at the time, he was still alive, you yeah. know. And even at the time, they told me, get the fuck out of here. When the police arrive, you don't need to fucking be here. Right. You know, like, that's that 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 love that you know so i left i left and i actually went straight to the hospital i went to Vietnam medical and um because you knew they were going to be i knew he was way. going okay. that way right because yeah so i was there uh and i was also informing family and stuff like that because they're all on the scene you know I'm, I'm i'm letting people know that hey this has happened. He's probably going to be going to Gwinnett Medical. And at the time, he was still talking and like coherent. Like he had been shot in the stomach. Turns out he had been shot like four or five times. You know, um, on the transport to the hospital is when he 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 passed. Right. You know, and the brothers were riding with him in 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 the ambulance. So when the brothers come out of the i guess mercy or whatever like we could all know that like he was gone you can see it in their it, face and it just it it crushed me like their mom was there father was there. like i mean i just it, it destroyed me it destroyed me because you know if it happened to one of us i mean we're a casualty of war like we're we're a part of the game like this is this is the risk that you take you know what i mean but he just he was just a good college kid man like he had no affiliation, nothing like that. But, you know, all he did was love and protect his brothers. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, it, it destroyed, it destroyed me, you know? Um, so then, you know, that happens. And then like they arrest like 20 of those guys, like, cause they start telling on each other and all this stuff. So they all get incarcerated into Gwinnett County Jail, right? But then they start telling each other. So they eventually, a whole bunch of them get out and, they're left with four guys, right? One guy was the guy that hit him with a bat, mm -hmm. knocked him down. One guy was the one who actually shot him. One guy fired rounds, but didn't hit him. And then I think one guy, uh, he was the brother of the other guy. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but they, they ended up saying, okay, well, y'all four are gonna be the ones that we're gonna charge with right. first degree murder. You know, and you know it was premeditated because I mean, literally, y'all sat in a parking lot for like forty five minutes waiting for us to come right out with a gun, with guns yeah. and bats, and and then all this stuff, you know, and and all that. But then, um, so those guys are those guys are locked up, and like six months later is when I go down with the uh, the drug charge, right? So I'm in county jail, in the same county jail with them, but they knew to keep us separated. Right. So like I always had to bounce around because if they had to move one around, they ended up having to move me around. But so I never ever got a chance to see any of them the, the time I was in county. And and on this trip, it didn't take long. You know, I was in county for like maybe six, six months, boom, trial. I mean, I took a plea, I got sent down to prison. You know what I mean? So I How was much waiting, times you get? I had a fifteen do ten. Okay. Right. So I went I went down to prison, but it was a drug charge though. So at least this one was like a nonviolent. So Pro came up pretty quick, you know. Um, but anyway, I was I was down in prison. I was all the way down in uh, Wheeler, kind of, which is like three, four, five hours outside of Atlanta, you know. And like a year later, the DA comes down to my prison to talk to me. The DA that was doing the murder case right. on my friends, right? And he was like, you know, we want to bring you back up to county in case we need to call you out as a witness on this murder case, you know. Right. And I was like. You know, that's fine. You can bring me back up there. But you know, if I see any one of these guys, I'm going to try to kill them. You know, and he's like, no, we're going to protect you. Don't worry about it. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, fine. So like a couple weeks later, I hop on the Bluebird going all the way back to county. So I get back to county, go back in the county cell and everything. And then two days later, uh, we're going out to court. So the way they do is they call out the pause that you go stand in line. There's a North Hall and there's a South Hall. Right. Right. So we're in line at South Hall to call us out of court. And I look up and like 20, 20 guys in front of me is one of the four guys, you know? And I'm like, at this time, I don't want to bum rush and tackle them because literally there are like five officers on this hallway right. pushing us down. It's like, it's not going to really get, I'm not going to even get to them, you know? So then we go down to the, to the crossway and then they line up the, the, the South Hall just kind of goes first. And then I'm seeing the other three 
in front, right? So we're all in this one big line going towards the holding cell to go to court, right? So I'm thinking, okay, any second now, they're about to pull me out of this line and separate me. So no. they're going into the cell, going into the cell, and so next thing you know, I'm in the cell with them. You know, I'm, I'm shocked that you were even in the same facility, but I see it, but I've seen it happen so many times. Right. One guy's on trial and three of the witnesses are in the room with them. Like they're moving them all together. It's like, what are you doing? Like, that's just. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they mess, messed this up, but you know, I'm glad that they did. You know? Uh, so when the door slams shut, I stand up and I'm like, okay, what's up now, motherfuckers? You ain't got your guns. We can either go four on one. Or I can go down the line and kick your ass one on one at a time. What do you want to fucking do? You know? And like one of the guys from my cell was like, yo, man, calm down, calm down. I was like, no, oh, man, because I, you know, I, these I consider my brothers was like, hey, he killed my cousin. Like, this is, you know, they killed, he's like, oh, man, do what you got to do, bro. You know? And the guy that I shot was one of the guys, you know? And now he, he can walk now. It wasn't yeah. like it was like a paralyzing injury or anything. And this is like years later. He was, I remember him sitting on the bench and the other guys were sitting, there was like, well, bench here, bench here, bench here, you know, and three of them were sitting here, he was sitting here and I'm in the middle, just monologuing, <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, basically, and then I remember he says, it's not that we're scared of you, motherfucker. We don't want to send you to the hospital, you know? And I was like, what? And I started walking to him. He stood up, I deck him. And I'm just wailing on this guy. So what do you think the other three guys do? They go banging on the fucking door, calling for the police. Right. Help, help, Debbie, 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 Debbie. You know, so they get in there and they yank me off this guy or whatever, you know. And then like um, one of the officers looks on his clipboard and he's like, he sees that yeah, I was yeah. supposed to be separated. He's, he just slams the fucking clipboard, clipboard and I was like, fuck goddamn, da, 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 da. So whatever, they separate us transfer us to the courthouse and then at the courthouse i could see the da come out i was like i will have y'all's fucking job if you cost me this trial right. da, 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 da. it was going off on him i mean the guy's going to court he's got a fresh shiner on you know what mm -hmm. i mean and like so but they ended up not ever using me in the trial at all did, did they uh, was just, i'm shocked that these guys went to trial like this is just that like that that's it seems like it I, seems like the the one guy you said that, that you had shot like most likely if he didn't hit him with a bat and he didn't shoot at him and he, you know what I'm saying? It, either way, he's the one that saw you. The reason he's in that. That's why this whole thing is here. Right. That's why he's one of the He one. saw you. He starts calling people. So you called these people here to, to do this, to do this. Like, and you you're coming with firearms, right? Like, yeah, you're not coming to maim. I mean, you know what I mean? You're coming with bats. Yeah. This is conspiracy to commit murder. Like yeah. you called your buddies here to kill this guy. Yeah. Right. You know? And, <clears> and like, so like, and I, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's bittersweet, but at least I got at least to put my hands on them. You know what I mean? <laughs> what, so what happened? What, so what did they? They all end up getting life sentences. Are you serious? Yeah, they all getting life sentences. They all got life sentences. And, you know, hearing through the grapevine, I told you Asian motherfuckers down in prison are food. I right. definitely know two of them are sucking dick. You know, the funny thing is, you know, the term fuck boy. Out here, you hear the term fuck boy. I don't know about right. you. The term fuck boy is a prison term. Yeah. I was going to say, it means something totally different. Totally in fucking yeah. different in prison. Like, somebody called me a fuckboy out here, I feel some type of way about it. You know what I mean? Because a fuckboy is a man. You, you're you not gay, but you're sucking dick. Right. And you're doing what you got to do because you don't want to get beat up or what the fuck ever. That is a fuckboy. You know what I mean? So, like, it's, it's weird that, you know, out here they call, like, these guys that are, like, you know, womanizers, right. boys, you know, but in prison, that's, that, yeah. that's, that, that's, what I was saying, it's like calling somebody a bitch out here is vastly different than being in oh, prison. Oh, like, yeah. It's you extremely, know. extremely different. I mean, something like small, like you sitting on my pillow. Right. Like we're, or even, you know, something like you don't sit on another guy's bed. You, you if you are, you, you yeah, at least say, Hey, ask, bro, like, yeah. there's nowhere to sit. Like, where do you want me? The guys will be like, Hey, you can sit on my bed. Right. But you wouldn't walk in and sit on someone's bed. Like, because that's the only little piece of property that they have. Right. Like, you have to respect it. Cause if not, then nobody else the, with the mentality is always like, Hey, that if you do it, everybody else right. thinks that they're going to be able to do right. it. And it's like the T your T the, your space in the TV room. That's your little piece of real estate. Even if you're not there, don't sit. And my, my there guys are like, don't uh, sit in my, my chair. chair. Or don't even sit. Like if I take my chair, like don't sit in this space. Right. That can be a problem sometimes. Guys come and say, you're in my space. 
Man, man, I'm, I'm watching my fucking show. Yeah, no, that's my space. Why? Because I've been here for 10 years. That's my state. Now it's a problem. Like, yeah, it's a problem. And know? then now it's a, like, who's going to back down? Right. Right. And so, yeah. like, with me, it's never backing down. Right. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, I was going to say, like, to, like, to me, it's funny because, like, I had been at the low so long, like, I had a space and I didn't, like, I didn't give a shit. Like, I didn't, I didn't give a shit about, I'm saying I didn't give a shit about my space. Like, I was like, because I would walk in and I would say, and everybody knew me, and I'd say, hey, bro, I'm sorry. They go, no, 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 sorry, cock, sorry. Cock. It's not a big deal. You know, and they'd move immediately. Right. Um, you know, and then I had other guys in the TV room who would say, yo, bro, don't sit there. That's Cox's space. Right. And then so guy, or did you ask him? And they'd come and ask me. I'd be like, you don't have to ask me. I know, but Kenny was there and Kenny wouldn't let me sit. Right. He said you would have a problem. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Right. Like, I'm not that guy. Right. I don't care. As long as when I'm coming tonight, I'm going to watch my show at seven. So, you know, you sit there. That's fine. And then guys would have, they would have um, contracts. You have your, have the guys would have contracts on stuff where like you'd have a contract with someone where he could sit at your space except for this to hold it down almost. Right. And then guys would have contracts on like food. Like oh, yeah. you'd have a contract on like I on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I get your bacon. You get my such and such. You know, I'll give you my hard boiled eggs throughout the whole week. Oh, God. I, I pay the guy two soups every week to wash my underwear. Right. <laughs> You've a, and they'll call it a contract. Like, we got a contract? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I got you. I got two you. Two weeks. He get a, two soups. He wash my underwear. I have a guy that uh, rolled my cigarettes. Like, I, didn't, I wasn't very good. And, yeah. and in Georgia at the time, you could still smoke in, in prison. You can't no more now. Right. But um, I obviously couldn't afford, they call them Cadillacs if you're out there smoking Newports, you know what I mean? So we had uh, rolled cigarettes. So um, he would, like, I think a box of Kite or Tops would come with like 30 rolling papers or something like that. So he would roll me 30 roll, roll cigarettes and then whatever tobacco was left was what he was allowed to keep right. for himself. And he'd have to go get papers on his own. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, the, these guys are, would clean their room, clean your room. Oh yeah, clean, absolutely. Clean, clean the room twice a day, or sorry, not twice, maybe two, three times a week. Some guys every day. Yeah. Um, some of these guys are super. You know, I'm. I'm very. I was very fortunate that my mother was was there for me. Like right. uh, she, I had a consistent sixty dollars a month that got put on my books. It was I could depend on it. And sixty dollars may not sound like much, but like in man, prison. in prison, like yeah, yeah it, I, 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 I stretched that out. Like I didn't have to hustle for my cigarettes. I didn't have to hustle for things. You know, I hustled just because I wanted to hustle. Yeah, you know what I mean. I had, um, you know, I taught the real estate class, so you you'd have forty guys show up, but only about fifteen or twenty wanted to actually be there. The yeah. other guys wanted to program, and so I'd say, look, you know, bring me, you know a coffee and two creamers and you get a certificate. I'll sign you in. I'll do the test. I'll do everything. <laughs> it's and, a hustle. Yeah. And I everything listen, is a hustle. have my, so initially within a week of the beginning of that class, I had at least four months worth of coffee and creamer in my, you know, then you could tell as the, as the classes or as it got towards the end, because it was slowly going. And it's funny. I, I would never run out like the, before I even ran out, I'm touching my next class. Same thing. Brow, it's full and, again. And remember, they call them fingers of, of coffee because they would take a glove and they would put coffee into a finger of a glove and tie the glove off. That would be one, that would be like one pack of coffee. So you would sell it by the finger. I, I, how many fingers of coffee is you need? Right. You know, so they, they, that's what, that was the thing. Uh, also, you know, the store man, you know, you know, two for three, three for five. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? The, yeah, the store man guys run a store. They have their, their, um, locker is a store and so if somebody comes and gets gets like they would give you like whatever you know two you, honey buns yeah two honey buns and you give them back three, three honey buns. buns that was the deal and you get three honey nice buns markup. three honey buns you get five yeah. three for five yeah. you know what i mean so um, that was their that was their hustle was the you know well, mike that was here the uh the um hudson? cocaine yeah mike hudson yeah. he used to come probably you know once maybe once a month he would run out of coffee he'd come he'd go Matt, I, I, I mean, what do you need? You know, <laughs> I'd go get an envelope and I'd fill up, you know, you, this is like two days where like it's a couple days I go to the store, I'll get you, you don't have to get me back. I'm good. And I'd put a bunch of coffee in the in an envelope, half an envelope folded up and see yeah, and I think you were a lot like me in the sense that like I was just a cool guy. You yeah, know, like I'm we said, like our superpower to... is kind of get people to like you, right? Yeah. So like <laughs> they called me China Man. Like I was the only China. That was my name. Nobody knew. Nobody knew my government name. You know what I mean? Right. Like China Man. That's what that was my nickname. And the hey China Man, hey China Man. You know what I'm saying? 
And so like, I was just that cool guy. And like, uh, I, I, I could facilitate certain needs, kind of like Red from uh, um, Shawshank Redemption. Right. right. Like if you need some, like, hey, I might be able to know somebody that knows somebody. And I, and I pretty much try to stay out of the politics. You know what I mean? Like that's when you're getting into sh- to shit. And luckily for me, I didn't have to because I had my, I had that sixty dollars a month that I could always depend on. You know what I mean? But I mean, even I ran tattoos in there. I had a little tattoo gun, you know, made out of a cassette tape motor and all that. You know, because back then they were still cassette tapes. We didn't have. I remember the time that I was serving, yeah. like cell phones weren't even out yet. Like internet was brand new. Um, you know, all that stuff was so new that like. They were still selling cause Walkmans on on. Yeah, now on, now they use the they now they use the um you know the electric razor they had used the, ah, the the it's the same little tiny it's that a battery. Little it's thing. all you need is that one battery to go. But no, the the little the little engine thing that spins. Yeah, it, the right? motor. Yeah, the little the motor. motor thing. It's all you need is they, that motor. You know, they take it out and they make a. Uh, they actually make like a gun a, that a, a is uh, amazingly. A, a, like a like a fucking tattoo. I mean, tattoo. I can show you like some of my prison tattoos. It's it's crap. You know what right. I mean? Because what it is is they'll take like a, a spring off of a like a ball a pen, and they will light that spring up and stretch it all the way back straight again, right? And then they will take one edge of that spring and use the concrete to sharpen it up to a point. Do you know what they use in Coleman? They use the uh, they. Guitar, guitar string, guitar. String. If you could get that in, yeah. if you could get that in, see that right. was a lot and harder. And they get, get furious because every once in a while a whole one would disappear, and they they shut the whole guitar, oh, they yeah. shut the whole you know instrument room down, and they yell at everybody, and somebody get fired, and yeah. it doesn't matter. We've got enough gu- for about a guitar year. Guitar string <laughs> is the best because like you're only using a certain amount of pieces of right. it, so you actually get a whole bunch out. Um, but yeah, but the, the the spring or the guitar spring, and and they would hook it to that motor, and they run it to the top. But the neat thing is, like, how did they come up with the ink? Right, the ink was smut. Yeah, you know, they took like basically baby oil, lit it on fire, and like encased it with like paper, and the ash that came up on that paper, they would scrape off and mix it with like um, toothpaste or something like that, and that was how they made their. I mean, it's ingenious. It, it really like some of these prison English. guys oh, will they, do. They make wine. They make. Oh yeah. They, they, how the fuck do you figure out how to make wine? For, they, they were like, like fermenting. Like, oh yeah. They were like artists. Well, what do they call it? Bombay's. Oh. They would call Bombay's like uh, like hunch punch. Like, right. They, they would make in there. You know, they would take, you know, leftover uh, peelings from apples and things like that from the from or, the kitchen or rice or rice or whatever, and it's, it's hiding it. Giving it enough time to ferment, yeah, yeah. hiding and it, and then releasing the pressure just enough because it'll like they'll put it in like a jug, and then you have to so it, it you know it expands of course so they have to keep you, you have to know what the timetable is to be able to go in and tss, and keep letting it letting out it out a little right, bit yeah. here a little and if you don't you could be sitting somewhere here boom <laughs> yep and, and all of a sudden the the water uh, <laughs> alcohol starts dripping, <laughs> dripping out, out of the fucking <laughs> ceiling yeah. or something and or wherever you gotta hit it yeah i'm assuming that's where he had the had the uh the bombay yeah. right yeah but that and it takes time but damn, man it's ingenious how how smart these guys would do things like i could like light a cigarette by popping an electrical socket you know like a light switch socket i'd stick my key behind it and i'd stick some foil in where the switch is and i'd run a pencil across that foil which would spark and i'd have a little piece of toilet paper with shredded on the end and catch that spark and that's where i would have my light and i'd light my cigarette up <laughs> you know what I mean? like, you see the guys with the batteries where they would take oh yeah the batteries they, with the two yeah. yeah so they they take like let's say you get um uh a potato chip a, you know the potato chip bags right that are like you know they, they're shiny inside right they would take them and cut them into a thin strip and they take a little like a a a, a double a battery and they just they take it, it and they, they put touch the ends and that actually lights up it gets that, hot it'll get hot it'll light it'll up like it'll, it'll turn like 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 a, a live wire and they like their shit I'm like these guys are they're genius insane. they're genius you'd be shocked dude. like you're in the shoe and these guys would do the the thing where they the what are they call the fishing. kite the kite yeah yeah they, the message. like these oh. guys would shoot it underneath the door <laughs> something yeah. heavy and and it and you've got string they take the string out of their thing and they make they, a long take it from the, they take it from their uh bedding yeah and they would sling it and it hit the wall shoot over, hit another wall, and shoot over and go right in the doorway that's 100 feet away. To the, to another, in the hole, you have nothing else to do, right? Yeah. So like, they want to get a message to that guy over there. So what they do is they take the string, like a thread, and they tie it to like uh, a pin cap. 
right? Like uh, just a cap that you put on a pin and their kite or their note would be mm-hmm. with, within that pin cap, right? And so then they tie that pin cap and literally they are shooting that cap out. And if they don't hit their target, they're using the string to pull it back exactly. to them and they to take another it. shot. <laughs> Sometimes they put it on like a domino or something, right? Yeah, they'd sit there just anything with some they, weight. Yeah. yeah, they just do this and you're, you, I would watch my, my celly do it. And you do it enough and times, get, you get really good at and it. And he'd be like, fuck. And you, this guy, this is the kind of guy that would do it three times. And he'd, he'd hit. Yeah. He'd literally hit. And then it, in it, he'd open up and the note would say, bro, I need some coffee. And yeah. then that guy would get an envelope, fill it up with coffee, tie it to it, and then be like, all right. And then he'd tug it back. Yeah. And he'd pull. Like you'd be in there with your cell. You go, you want some coffee? I mean, I don't have no coffee. You know what? And Me neither. Hold on. And it would take like, it would take like maybe five hours to get that note over there. But you ain't got shit else to fucking yeah. do. Yeah, got shit else to do. Like. Why? Uh, yeah, that, that. And the other inmates would help. Like it might and shoot it no. to the other. And guy. they knew. And they knew not you, to look bro. at the note. Yeah, they knew not to look at the note. You shoot it to another. If it go, because sometimes you shoot it, it would literally go like this down, and you shoot it into that guy's thing, and he he knows he really he's not supposed to look at that note. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, it's yeah, kind of yeah. like a code. You know what so, I mean? You, you know what's funny? The um the COs in the in the shoe. Uh, when they would walk, like when I was going to the shoe one time, like there were lines all through the hallway. Oh yeah, and they'd see the cop coming, and all of a sudden they'd start pulling them back in. Yep. And you'd see all these lines sliding across and <laughs> sliding into. The, it was like it's like a spider web in reverse. This is, this is this what's very- happening? <laughs> because it's just in there, you have no, you have no, you have nothing but time. Nothing else to do to entertain yourself. If nothing else, just getting that note down there entertained you for five hours. Oh, and what a, what a feeling of accomplishment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is insane. This is my life. That's how low my expectations of life, my <laughs> out of life are so low that I'm going to spend three hours trying to fucking, you don't even want any help. I got you, bro. No, I want to do it. Right. <laughs> or you might just be doing it just to, you know, pss- Pass on a message. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, bro, what's up? How you doing down there? Yeah. <laughs> that was two hours. There were things that we used to do. You know what we would do? We would pump toilets, right? Pump the toilet. And then I could talk to yeah. my next door neighbor yeah. through, the, through the pipeline, the toilet. So in ACDC, the women's dorm was either like above or below. And these guys, would they get all rid of all of it. And they would sit there and talk to some girl three stories above them. They're like on a date. Like guys would be oh, like, yeah. "Bro, I got a date at 7. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, yeah. There's I chick wish at I had seven. that. <laughs> yeah, through the toilet. Yep. I mean, that's just ridiculous. How horrible. And not only that too, but the toilet also is is a vacuum. So like, if you were to be smoking, yeah, they would you just know, flush you it. Could just you could you could just blow it down to that toilet, and it would suck the 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 smoke right down in there. I mean, there is ingenious. Some of these guys in there really are. If they would. Including myself, yeah, I was say, <laughs> if, they, if they if they actually took their you know, you know their smarts and everything and just push it in the right direction, they these they, they could be they would be successful people out here. You know what I mean? They have all the 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 skills to be successful, but they're just using it in the wrong avenues. You know, right, right. Uh, including like right. I said, including myself. You know, I just say I I your your grill with the uh, the things. I so <laughs> you, do you see what it actually do you see what it actually says? No. What does it say? I can't it's some is it d- something like panda. What? Panda? <laughs> and it, it actually says has, panda. And it actually has a panda on the last one. <laughs> show you gotta show it on this camera right here. <laughs> hey, go down? There we go. Yeah, they're focused. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to get that to, to get him. Be a thumbnail picture. Yeah, we'll <laughs> right. Um, I was going to say, when I was first got locked up, like I've been locked up, I don't know, like a month or so. And I was in Oklahoma City, going through Oklahoma City. There was this black guy that we were all in this one holding cell, right? And there was a black guy. There was probably 50 guys crammed into a room, probably maybe this size. Yeah, maybe maybe 70 guys, crammed. maybe not quite this big. And I remember there was this black guy who, clearly was working out and taking steroids. He was massive, oh, yeah. right? I've had to fight a few of those. Uh, well, no, I mean, I didn't fight him. I'm just standing there. I'm it, saying it sucks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just standing in the room with him. And um, and I glance over and I thought, fuck, this guy's massive. See, and he's standing I don't there. give myself that time to think no. that because then I'll talk myself out of it. <laughs> well, he's, he's just sitting there. Because keep in mind, most of the people going to the transfer center have, like they've 
well, half of them have been arrested. Right. Either they're going to another prison or they've just been arrested. Mm. So you're just sitting there like you're still kind of like in like just numb. Yeah. yeah. And he's standing there. It takes time to accept the fact that like your situation. Yeah. Is, yeah. And so we're just sitting there, you know, waiting to be called. And he and I, I kind of, I look, oh, look, I just happen to look up at him as he's like, kind of, we're both kind of looking around, and he looks over at me, and he goes, and he's, he, he, but I could see his teeth, like I'd never seen that before, right? Right. And this guy looked like a bigger version of Blade, and so when he does that, when he kind of smiles, and I see the teeth, I go, holy shit, like that, and, and he goes, and he laughs, he goes, <laughs> and so then he laughs, and I went, bro, are those really? He said. <laughs> He goes, yeah. He said, they're in there. I was like, fuck. I said, you look like a fucking superhero. And he just started laughing. <laughs> He's like, bro. He started, he, we, we, it was, you could tell he must have just gotten arrested for something. Yeah. He was laughing. And, and you know, we're just, everybody's super quiet. Like, they're quiet, unless one or two guys might know each other and they're talking. And, but it's funny because I've mentioned this before. There's an old man there, had to be in his 70s or something, maybe 80s. And he, he looks, Wait, sorry. The old man says, um, I gotta go to the restroom. And he sees the door and he walks over to the door and grabs the door. And tries to go. And he goes, and it, it doesn't open. He goes, Hey, they got us locked in here. <laughs> and I and <laughs> I said Reality check. Yeah. And I went, I said, Yeah, it's probably gonna be a lot of a lot of locked doors. <laughs> like that. And and the black guy goes, What are you here for? Like that. And he goes, I just was I was just I was just my 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 daughter she's or no, my my granddaughter she's one of those uh those those uh, lesbians she's gay she's one of those and uh i was just she asked me to videotape her and her friend mm. and yeah and and so you know then they, they they said we should put it on the uh the internet yeah. and so then they they came and arrested me yeah and i sat there you, and, and i was just like and look the guy like the black guy like looked at me and he goes like what? Like, like and I was like, like he would have got beat up right then at that moment. Yeah. Well, he, we was, you know, we were like a transfer center, but it was so he. We just looked at. It, I said, I, all I could think of was like, you are so grand that you should have so, known to kept that shit you, to yourself. You really? That's a bad. Like even though I know you phrased it as best you could, you could you put cannot that. Not phrase that in any other way. Yeah. I mean, it, it. Yeah. I was thinking, you're done. Like no you're matter done, what, you need to learn to shut the fuck like, up. If that was the best version he could give. You need to learn to shut the fuck up. You got to, and you could tell he just, he was just clueless. Too. Yeah, he was he's clueless. an old man. He's like an old man. He, I mean, he didn't fucking know the door was locked. Right. And by the way, there was a toilet like right over here. I was like, bro, there's a toilet over oh, there. Yeah. Oh, that's how, that's oh, how you, okay. that's how you know who's like really been there. Like then, like that somebody was not going to waste it. Wait, they're going to go take a shit. Yeah. And they're going to go take a shit. Like, and he's looking around like, well, there's all these people in here. It's like, <laughs> man, that's, that's going to happen too. <laughs> No, yeah. I mean, I remember my first time sitting in the hotel, cell, and then I remember every every time after that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's definitely, uh, it's definitely different once you've been down there before. But yeah, like he, yeah. And it's funny because the same thing you said, like there are people that I knew in prison, right? That when I got out, the internet had now AOL. This is when you still had dial up and everything like that. And I could go on and search the Georgia Department of Corrections on some of these people. And like, I'm like, dude, you are a fucking pedophile. I had no <laughs> idea. Like, you told me some story that you beat some kid after school with a baseball bat. You know what I mean? Like, and, and it was so intricate story that he told me. Like, I'm oh, thinking yeah. you're in there for some kind of aggravated assault. And it turns out you're out there molesting little kids. Well, like, you know, it always kills me is that they typically, you know what the lie is? When they ask them, what are you here for? It's, oh, fraud. Uh, what, you got to pick fraud? <laughs> like, you can't say drugs. Or, like, right. not that anybody's going to believe you were selling drugs. Like, just looking at these guys, it's like, you're not selling drugs. Right. But fraud, you got to go with my crime? <laughs> like, and then I would have to be, these guys would ask me to come. And, and check them. Yeah, they'd say, Cox, that dude here says he's here for fraud. Him. Go talk to him. I'm like, I don't want to talk to him. Yeah. Why? And they go, just go go find out. Here's what he's saying. And I, I go, fuck. That's the other thing. Information yeah. is everything. Everybody yeah. wants information. Well, it's I was, information is power. Well, I was going to say, well, I'd walk over and listen, like, you knew within, like, you know another drug dealer. All right. It, especially if he has no idea. Like, if you tried to talk to me about drugs, like, bro, I can't fake it. <laughs> I can't tell you. I don't know right. what the cost. I don't know where to get it. I can't. You see it in a second. Same thing with the fraud guys. I'd walk over and within within three minutes, I'm like, yeah, he's got, he had pictures on his computer. Right. And I'm walking away. Like, I said, that's it. It's done. It's done. Like, it's it's obvious. Like, you know, 
they would get the names of the charges wrong. They couldn't tell you what they did. They couldn't tell you how they did, or they didn't want to talk about it at all. Like, oh, my, my lawyer said not to talk about it. Stop it, bro. Right. That, was, that already tells you something. Yeah. Yo, no, these guys that I'm in there, like, they had these stories. They've been telling that lie for so damn long that they actually probably believe he'd be so good. Yeah. About, you know, the baseball bat. You know, and, and it was just funny. I just kind of randomly went, I went on there to look for myself. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? Let me just type in some of these guys that I knew. And it was just like, man, Dang. I was like, man, if I would have I would have never sit there and talk to you. Like that, that is a true thing about that. Like, you know, about um, rape and like uh, molestation, like on kids and stuff like that. Like guys don't, they definitely do take that a certain way in prison. Like, yeah. They, they, because like, I've, for example, uh, I knew a Sully that used to keep pictures of his kids up, right? And then he had noticed his roommate one day would like be like, like he like when guys are in there jacking off, whatever, you know, you yeah. do the little thing here, yeah, there's a little code, let you know, hey, I need the room for a little while. But he would notice his pictures would be moved. Uh, like it wouldn't be put back in yeah. the exact right spot. And that was it, bro. Well, like, he got so bad they wouldn't let you put your pictures on the cork board, you know, in your cell. You uh, had to keep them in the in the locker. Yeah, we didn't have a cork board. <laughs> oh, yeah. We had a cork board. You guys got TVs in your in your cells too. Right? No, I heard some oh. cells, some some feds. You got TVs? No, I know the food was good. You say feds. The food was compared to when I first got there. It was really good. And then just about a year, well, maybe six months to a year after I got there, they went on what they called the national menu. Uh. And so it just immediately got to be much worse. But in comparison to state prison or even what you expect inmates to be served, it wasn't bad. There were some exceptional, at least once or twice, a week, you got a meal that you're like, damn, that's like street food. Yeah, that you happened know? to us at Christmas. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christmas, yeah, the, <laughs> we ho- get the holiday meal. The holiday sucked. meal. That's yeah. the only time we get. Yeah. And I would buy as many of those trays as I could. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then you yeah, obviously package. You know, you get like the holiday package where they could send oh, you yeah, like some, yeah. some Well, cookies. no, we didn't. The, the feds actually gave us that you get a holiday basket. They actually gave you one where they actually gave you food, you know, and it wasn't. So I'm gonna say it wasn't shit. Like it wasn't like anything a lot. It doesn't the matter. Fact it's the fact that you can't have it. Something. It's the fact that you can't have it. Right. It doesn't matter what it is. It's the fact well, that you cannot it's have it. It's the fact that you're giving me something when I'm an inmate in prison. You're giving me what's probably ten dollars worth of, of food. And it's it and it's also it's uh, I remember this guy uh used to say he's like, they're exotics. Yeah. So because it was something they didn't sell they didn't on commissary. Oh, commissary. If they didn't have it on commissary, I paid probably fifteen dollars for a bottle of soy sauce that a guy came, guy got transferred over. Yeah. There's probably a dollar ninety nine in the store at his store at that other camp because yeah. commissaries are different based on where yeah, camp yeah. you're at. So when you get transferred over, you, you're bringing your commissary with you. And man, if those are exotics, like yeah. you know things that you just can't. If you just can't have it, man, that price goes up just like drugs. Oh my God! Like the the cost of drugs and in prison is is astronomical compared to like the markup. So my cousin worked in facilities at Coleman, and he knew they knew about six months before they were gonna go w- that no more cigarettes. Like, oh, like you could yeah, have. I'm so glad that I didn't. But, I got out. For but that. he knew for six months. So what he, he did? Up. He not only that he so he went to his boss and said, "Listen." It's fucking there's tools everywhere. Like it's hard to keep in touch. Can, can I build a, a a a board where we can actually put the tools? And 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 he his uh, his boss was like, that's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. Let's. Do. He's like, like I need like three of them. Like one over here. We can put two here. Can we? We have the stuff. And he's like, yeah. So he built these boards and then traced all the tools. You know, had it. Oh really yeah, like how, little, yeah. how they should how it should be. But because if was, you're gonna make something that covers something, you're gonna make it look good. <laughs> <laughs> but it, he, it was framed out in a two by four. And if you remove like four screws, you could peel it back. And he, so now he's got a four inch by six feet by, you know, four feet section that he can stack all of the cigarettes. So he's like, we had, he's like, and keep in mind too, he said initially they were selling the cigarettes for like almost double. He said within a month and a half, two months. They're buying now. It's like five times, six times what they were buying them for. So he made they made thousands. He and I think this guy weeks that I knew. I think they both like just were oh, that is, stockpiling. That, that is the hustle now. Yeah. Like, even when I was in Rice Street, it's funny. Uh, the trustees 
at Rice Street, the guys who brought the trays down around and stuff like that, they were allowed to have cigarettes in their commissary. But like the other inmates weren't allowed to have it. Right. And every time you see the trustees come around passing out trays, I mean, they got gold chains on. Every ring, every finger has diamond rings on it. Because at Rice Street, you are allowed to bring up one piece of jewelry, a watch or or a ring or your necklace or whatever like that. And these guys were literally trading out like ten thousand dollar chains for five packs of roll up cigarettes. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> these guys are nuts. Yeah, it's, it's not. I, and it's another story I tell you. I was sitting at the uh, holding cell at uh, Atlanta City Jail when I right. was after the after the attempted murder, and there was a guy in there snuck a Snickers bar, like you said, snuck a Snickers bar to the holding cell, right? And there was another dude in there. I was like, "Hey, man, what would you take for that Snickers bar?" You know? And the guy's like, "No, nah, man, I don't really want to give it up." You know what I'm saying? He's like, "Come on, man, what would you, what would you give for that Snickers bar?" Right? This guy peeled out like a diamond ring, a gold chain. I'm probably talking about like at least like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars worth of jewelry for that Snickers bar. And he gave it up for the Snickers bar because it's just like, what is this going to do for me yeah, anymore? Right now, like it. this might be the last. I time can't I'm bring gonna, it with yeah. me. They're going to take it from me. Yeah, like he's anyway. like, I, I'm, a, I want the Snickers bar. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like it's just. You can always tell the guys that are about that got arrested that know they're about to do ten years. Like they just got arrested and they know, and the guys that got arrested that think they're going to get out and they're right. this, like they, you, their priorities are completely oh, different. Oh yeah. And that's what kills me is like, you know, I'm sitting all the time, somebody's talking and I'm like, you're in there for a fucking goddamn DUI or some shit. Like you're about to be, you're about to be home and you're sitting here crying about this shit. And I don't know if I'm going to be in here for the rest of my life for all I know. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that also yeah. like. Oh, and, Colby, Colby's heard me say this. I, I was sitting at the medium one time and i was complaining about my time i was like i'm fucking be like 60 years old when i get out and they were i was sitting with like three guys and one guy was like i got 30 more years and the other two said i'm yeah. never leaving yeah and i remember thinking stop complaining stop bro saying, nobody gives time. a fuck about your don't problems tell don't tell about time also like when uh the day i when i found out i got parole right mm -hmm. I was like nobody knew i don't tell anybody yeah yeah and then they but the day that i left i i walked out Handed to my boy some of my things like, hey, man, I'll see you guys. That was it. Yeah. Like, because people get jealous. People will fuck you up just because they know that, like, hey, you're about to go home yeah. and they're not. They start hating on you. Yeah. They start really <laughs> despising you and trying to get you into trouble and trying to start fights with you. And it's like, they, because this guy's got 10 more years or 15 or 20 yeah. or maybe life. Yeah. And what he just, like? he just looks at you and you're going home in a week and he hates you for that. Right. He's jealous. And, and, and it's a real thing. It's like a, you, it yeah. It sounds stupid, but, but it's a real thing. Absolutely And this real. could, this person could even be your friend. Right. You know what I mean? It could be a friend of yours that like still feels that way. Like it's just, you just don't tell anybody. I don't tell anybody. Like literally they found out when I was walking out carrying all my shit. You know what I mean? Like, you just don't tell people. You know, Zach and I had a buddy named uh, John Gordon that literally just disappeared one day. Knew he was being shipped. Never told. And we spent, I shit you not, two years with John Gordon. Every single day we hung out with him and talked to him and joked with him. And super smart guy, funny guy. Like, I would have told you 100% we are all good, good, as good of a friend as I am to Zach. And John Gordon just disappeared. Nobody's ever seen him since. And yeah. no clue. And I always kind of say it like this too, like when you're in prison, it's like you're dead, right? Because time stops for you at that point. All you do in prison is regurgitate stories that you that you had yeah. when you were free, yeah. right? Because you're not talking about nothing else. You're just telling war stories, right? So time for you completely stops. Whereas outside the world, the time's still moving. But right? you stop maturing too. You just, yeah, everything stops. You right. just you're, you're stopped at that point in your life. That is what you are, and you do not get any 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 better. Right, right. And and like when people come to visit you, it's like I say, it's like come and visit a gravestone. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Until you get out, and that's when time starts back for you again. Like you, I went in with like pagers when I when pagers were around. That's when I when I got yeah. locked up. I come out and there's dial up internet like. I'm telling you, I was dial up. Like, imagine me coming out, fucking <laughs> iPhones. I've never seen an iPhone in my life. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I came out with like, but the, they they had like cell phones. Yeah. Now I didn't dial up in the amount of p porn that I because <laughs> that's one thing that did take away in prison. They took away all yeah. the all the magazines, right? So 
that was a hustle. I had several pages. I didn't have whole magazines. I had pages from 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 some. Yeah, you know with, what I mean? With the tape over with it, right? Well, yeah, with with that, I, that I would. This is a hustle too. Yeah. You want to borrow my girl? Yeah. It costs you a hundred bucks. You can borrow her for to get you your 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 your, your straightening, right? Yeah. So like, when man, I had masturbated to the same girl wrongly. I don't know how many times, right? I get out of prison. I'm like the internet. I don't think I left the computer <laughs> for, uh, for, for a week of that. I mean, it was just it was crazy. Like it. it it just it it blew my mind. The whole internet thing just blew my mind. And that was only like three years. Yes, and that was know? only three years yeah. from because because from went from cell from pagers and when I got out it was uh, cell phones and it was right when those Nokia phones were having like everybody everybody has had Snake. I don't know if you were around during that Snake. time. The the game Snake. You, you remember and they had like the different. That's when I got out. Right. So like now, cell phones were like mobile and text message all this was all new and you know all i knew was pages and, but that is now the hot item in prison cell phones yeah like those are i mean one cell phone would go for thousands of dollars in prison you know um but i'm hearing now they're giving out like uh tablets yeah you know I, federal I, I prison think, they've yeah, got they tablets, get tablets out right yeah and things like that uh it, it's it's just it's just different now but like the tobacco is the the big thing you, you know I, I you know how they're getting it in nowadays you know, before, you know, they did the tennis ball or they get it through visitation, right? Oh, or drones. they get an officer. The drones. drones. They're doing the drone drops now. And that's crazy. That, that That's how sophisticated that they have become to override the system, mm -hmm. to get away, get around the system. Like, it's always a way to get around the yeah, system. You're going to figure something they're gonna, out. They're going to figure something out because they have nothing to do but time to think about it. Right. You know what I mean? Nothing else to do but time to think about it. Like, I mean, just like uh, the guy from Shawshank Redemption. Look how many years it took him from to dig out that hole with that little stupid rock hammer. You know what I mean? He had nothing pressure and time. Pressure and time, man. That's what I was going to say, I was gonna say um, it, we were talking when we were talking about like the not being concerned about prison anymore. Like, that's how I, I feel like now. Like, the prison isn't a deterrent for me. What's the deterrent for me is that I'm too old to go back to prison. Like, I, I'm, I, like I can't lose any more time out here. I wouldn't right. care if I to go to prison for five years. Like, okay, fine. The problem is, now I have to start over. So I'm not scared of being in prison. I'm scared yeah. that I have to start over. I'm an old man. What am I, you know what I'm saying? Like it, I don't, if I was 30 years old right now, if I was 30 years old and I would have been twice as bad as I was when I was actually doing my crime, right. I would have been much more reckless now if I went back in time because I would be thinking going to prison, I'm not concerned about because right. I, I know I can, I know I'll be okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's now not, it's, it's not, just it's not time. The, it's not the, it's not the fear of going or being in there. It's the fear of losing your freedom. Right. The fear of like, hey, like now we have, I don't know how old you were when you were, I was very young. So now I have responsibilities that, you know, back then I didn't have responsibilities. So it was, it was no big deal. But now I go in, who's going to pay the mortgage? Who's right. going to take care of my kids? Like, you know what I mean? Like there, 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 there are ramifications now that are way more important. But back then, you know, I I didn't think about those things. So, how old were you the last time you got out? It happened in two. I got out in two thousand and three. What did you start doing then? Like, I'm assuming at that point you decided that I can't do this again. Believe it or not, it was kind of like a a, a stroke of luck here. Um, so one of my guys, like like you said, your your buddies, and they're like, you know, your your clique. Yeah. Right. One of my guys got out six months after me. Right. And his mom was a um, administrative assistant at a big accounting firm, right? And so they hire people to come in uh, seasonally to help out during tax season, right? Okay. So he got me a job there as a temp that ended up turning into a career, a 20-year career. Like I was actually a, a corporate auditor for affordable housing Are you for, for, a top 10, for a top 10 accounting firm. For 20 years. Absolutely. You've got multiple felonies. I Doesn't matter. Well, because you work underneath them. Well, it's actually funny that? because I I literally lied on my because back then in 2003, it wasn't as easy to run a background check right. as it is now. Now it's just you, they got companies out there like, you know, I, I, I couldn't even get hired for uh, Uber. Right. You know what I mean? Like, the, even though my last crime was like over 20 something years ago, it, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, um, but uh, what happened was I went and 
it was happened, uh, Katrina happened, right? And after Katrina happened and the Gulf Coast was like annihilated, right? Uh, the US government gave Mississippi an $8 billion grant to, to fix, right? To help. To rebuild. To rebuild. So they hired our firm to implement a process and how to delegate out this money. Okay. Right. So they sent us to Mississippi to oversee these centers that had these people coming in and applying for these grants. Right. So I was, I was sent over there for like six months, you know, overseeing a, a center. So that's a nice chunk of money, right? Yeah. Relocation. You, you, you're, you get paid a lot more if you're not necessarily no? not, we, we did get a little bonus but it wasn't not it wasn't necessarily you know i mean obviously expenses are paid thought it'd be like a traveling nurse like these chicks are going from they right. would be making 60 and now they're making one hundred and fifty thousand. yeah no nah, it wasn't nothing like that oh, okay but what happened was uh because it was a government uh funded program we had to run background checks on all the people who worked there because we hired people that were our locals there we oversaw them but on the back end they ended up wanting to have to run them on us because we had to have the clearance. Right. Right. So then I was like, this is already too late. I had already did the job. Right. So I was like, fuck, this was like five, six years in. Right. I'm like, I went to my partner, closed the door. First thing he said to me was like, please don't tell me you're about to quit. And I was like, no, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'll still have a job when I walk out this door. Right. And I laid my cards on the table. You know what I mean? And it was very like, Hush, hush. It was, I, I worked for two partners. I was going to say, is this your buddy's mother? No. Oh, she's, she's definitely she just worked got, there anymore. She just got you the job. Yeah, she's oh, got okay. a job. Initially. This is a partner of the firm. You okay. Know? And so it went from him and my other partner that I worked for to guys. And then they went to the head managing partner of the Atlanta office. Right. And then he had to fly all the way to Bethesda, which is where our corporate headquarters to talk to the partner over HR about it because immediately it's their, 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 uh, their proper way to handle it is immediate termination. Right. Right. But they thought they saw that I was an asset because by then you've been working there forever. so hard and I'm an asset. I was bringing, I was making, I was bringing in money. So then they were like, you know, they went to talk to her and what all ended up happening was just like, look, us four people know, and that's it right we don't ever tell anybody else anything we just sweep it under the rug because the reason why is let's say something happens there on that line another guy happens they fire him and he's like yo well, what happened to panda why why didn't panda right. get fired you know what i'm saying like you know so it was all swept under the rug so that was like five six years into my career i stayed in it another 15 years you know what i mean right. and uh unfortunately i actually got let go about a year ago, you know, from the job, it was it, it broke my heart because it's like, dude, I was loyal to you guys for twenty years. You know, like my boss was loyal to you for twenty years, and you threw me away like a piece of trash. You know what I mean? Like, and was you, there a reason? Just they were layoffs? The, no, it wasn't one. even a layoff. It, it, it was. It's, it's really kind of all of a mystery, honestly. Like it kind of came out of the blue. Uh, there was no severance, but it wasn't a firing. They were just saying that my position has is no longer has been dissolved that they don't have that the need anymore because i was still making them a lot of money you know i was bringing in the firm probably like five six hundred thousand dollars a year easily covered my salary you right. know and and they were making a nice bit of change yes they probably could have hired somebody else cheaper than me you know what i mean but honestly like you know I'm only here, only making that because you guys gave it to me. I mean, I've been right. with you for 20 years of loyalty. That's why I kind of mess with my head, man. It's like, you know, these trust issues, right? Yeah. You got trust issues. Like, so like, yeah, let me go. And then now I'm finding how hard it is to get a job with it. Like I said, I got, I, I got turned down by Uber. Right. And you got to remember that, how humble humbling I had to be to like, you know, yeah. I'm working, I was like a corporate auditor with the office for for 20 years, you know, and then now I'm, I humble myself to that and and still can't get a job. Like, it's just that that, that thing carries with you mm -hmm. forever, you know, and they don't care how long ago. They don't even give you the opportunity to even explain it. They don't care. And you know what? My charges were so bad. Like I hit every point. One, burglaries. So I'm a, I'm a thief, yeah. right? Two, 
aggravated assault, attempted murder. I'm violent. Right. Three drugs. I mean, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> what kind of job it is? Like, right. you, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the strike yeah. mark on that. Wor- all the worst <laughs> employee, yeah, worst potential for <laughs> worst, 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 worst. So, like, even though I have like 20 years of experience, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter at all. You know, so that's why I've kind of like branched out. That's why I'm even doing this show with you right now because this was a deep, dark secret. I could never have had my career with this being out there. You know what I mean? But now I found out that that career doesn't matter anymore because there is no potential there anymore. So that's why I'm like, I'm I'm coming out from behind the curtain. I'm not going to be that because I used to wear a mask. I mean, I, yeah, obviously, you know, I can't work corporate America walking in like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I wore that mask. You know what I mean? For 20 years, you know, but now, hey, man. I don't have to be a mask. I don't need to hide behind a curtain. Obviously, it, it, you know, I'm just going to be me and 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 let the world see who I am and and, and figure out. Well, know. I mean, just being you doesn't pay the bills. What are you doing for for what are you doing right now for a living? What are you doing for? I'm still looking. Uh, I'm not looking in in that route. I'm looking more of as an entrepreneur, right? Okay. So. Uh, I've created a school curriculum. I was there. I went back to Vietnam, you know, oh, and yeah, I was, the, yeah, I went back to Vietnam last year for the first time in, in my entire life in 40 years. First time I ever went back since you were six months old. Yes. Yeah, so six months old, I went back for the first time and honestly, I was in a dark place. You know what I mean? Like I had like depression issues and, and things that I mean, trust issues, you know? Right. And it's all, it's on my bucket list to go back. You know what I mean? So I, by myself, went back for a month. And it just opened my eyes to a completely different way of living. And, like, culturally. Like, over there, when they honk the horn at you, it's not like a fuck you kind of thing. Right. It's like, a, hey, just letting you know I'm here. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's a courtesy. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you'll see these intersections that have, like, no stoplights. And there are, like, a million scooters and cars that are just going through this intersection. And yet there are no accidents because people just let people go. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's just a completely different lifestyle. And it kind of like, kind of rejuvenated me that like, hey, this is pretty awesome. You know what I mean? Like, and so like, I, I, I was trying to think like, what, what ability do I have? You know, so I can teach English, you know, so I'm creating an online school that I could teach. It's, it's like, uh, they're 12 hours apart from us. So like. My classes would be like 7, 8, 9, 10 p.m. here. And over there would be 7, 8, 9, 10 a.m. Okay. You know, and I'm looking for, and this is a totally new venture. I haven't like completely, I've already created my own curriculum. Right. And everything. But I now have to go get the students, you know. So we're we're in a phase right now where I am trying different avenues, right? So my rap thing is, is one avenue. The school is one avenue. Also, I'm considering maybe opening some kind of business here because being your own boss, obviously, it doesn't matter what your record is. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, I been living on. I had to like liquidate my my retirement to be able to last for now. Whoa. You know, I mean, it sucked. That that really that really that hurt. But it's kind of like, hey, the bills keep coming. The kid, I have children. You know what I mean? So, but I'm in that like hustle mode. You know, I'm in that hustle mode. I'm, I'm, I'm now not afraid to tell my story anymore. Like my rapping is a lot of like street. You know, I mean, and 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 they're not lies. They're just like they're. It's it's just real life shit that I went through. But the difference is a lot of these rappers nowadays, like Twenty One Savage and them. They're they're living that life right now. Like they're they're rapping about their life right yeah, now. Yeah, that's why they're still getting that's shot. Why, that's why they're still going through all that shit. With me, it's like, hey, I'm just telling you about how I used to live it. Right. You know what I mean? Because for 20 years, I was not, you know, some gangster like like that. Like you know, I, I was a corporate guy. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. and a model citizen. You know, <laughs> for for 20 years. Uh, but you know, now circumstances have led to, to things. So like, I, I'm looking for avenues. I'm honestly, I'm hoping maybe this might be even be a jump start for something that might be able to help me. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm always just looking for different avenues. Uh, I do have a very good network in Atlanta. A lot of people know me. Uh, so I am now just starting to reach out and try to see like 
I don't want to have all my eggs in one basket, but whichever basket happens to be one that takes off is the one that I'm going to focus my energy on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You got to double <laughs> so, down on what's making you money. Exactly. So, uh, you know, I have, like I said, uh, my my own channels. I got music that I, I got out and we'll just see what happens to take off. What you, channels? What? I'm like my, uh, I got a YouTube channel that I okay. created that's got some of my songs on there. That's like if we sample some of the songs that you guys hear some of the stuff. What, what, what's the name of the channel? it's all panda panda yeah i i'll i'll send you all my uh all links. my social links yeah how, how did panda come about because you've never mentioned panda before i mean other than the teeth and then the the well you know. the thing is i, I kind of feel to myself like panda's an asian thing right right uh and but people forget that pandas are actually still fucking bears right you know they they're cuddly and all these videos but you keep forgetting that they're a fucking bear still. You know what I mean? Like, so that's kind of like how I feel like I am, right? I come at you in, in a very smiley way, but, but it can inside, go <laughs> it could go bad. I'm a fucking bear still. You know what I mean? Like, don't get it twisted, you know? And like a lot of things have happened. I don't know if you noticed like, my limp when I walked in. Did you I, I noticed on the Instagram page, you have a, a brace on, on one of the legs. Right. So what happened in 2009, I was hit by a drunk driver. And I was on a motorcycle. Mm. And unfortunately, he had no insurance. He was an illegal. Right. So I was in intensive care. I went through surgeries. And so basically, I lost the use of my right leg. I have the leg. I just don't have the nerves. Right. Because basically, my right foot was here oh. when that showed up. It means I was laying on top of my leg that folded under my body. Ugh. Not to mention, you know, you see here. I mean, these arms broke down. I, I, I have bones sticking. I was like Wolverine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. claws, you know? My left leg was also broken. Um, they didn't think I was going to survive. Like, literally, they, uh, the, the first responders that showed up treated it as it was going to be a homicide. They they roped off the scene and collected evidence because they thought that there's no way I was going to make it, that this guy was going to have to be charged with vehicular homicide. Uh, but I made it. I didn't have any brain damage. Um Eh. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Jury's, you know, jury's ain't, still out. Ain't, ain't, ain't no more than I've done to myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, How long were you? Was it to recover? I mean, to this day, I'm still. You know, I still take medication over for it. Uh, I still have like nerve, like nerve ending pains because the, the nerves ripped. You know right. what I mean? So, uh, but it took it took a while to get to to where I was right now because I mean, at that time, remember, both arms, both legs were broken, but bones heal. You know, so like I was literally like, I couldn't do anything, right? You know, and that was a very humbling experience, you know, to like have someone have to take care of you that you couldn't do. I couldn't brush my own teeth. Yeah, I couldn't take a shit. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's a humbling experience to 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 have to go through that. You know, but it taught me. You know, um, then I went through a breakup after that. I was in a seven and a half years relationship. We got engaged and then like part of ways. So then I kind of basically like, uh, I was a shell of myself for a while. From after that, I was like a, a hermit. I just didn't, I was in that dark place and I stayed there. You know, I was in a house by myself. I got a dog, you know what I mean? And he kind of saved me too because I, he wasn't necessarily an emotional pet or anything like that, but he, he forced me to be like, look, I need you to feed me. Mm -hmm. I need you to take care of me. You have to get up off your ass because I need you. You know what I mean? Uh, but, you know, it's a funny story because I, my buddies, and I have some really good friends out there that I like, just wouldn't like let me just wither away. Right. You know, and they would, you know, before that I was a big, I'm a big social person. I'm extroverted. And I'm, I'm at the clubs. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm an Atlanta socialite. And uh, they, they kept trying to get me to go out again and things like that. And I'm just like, man, I can't deal with cloud, crowd. I made up every fucking excuse under the sun not to go, right? And so my buddy told me, he was like, you know what? Can you sit down? I was like, sit down? Yeah, that's one thing I can do. I can sit down. He's like, I'm going to take you to a place that all you got to fucking do is sit in a chair. Strip club. That's exactly where he fucking took me. That's exactly no, that's where, what Colby was thinking. That's exactly where he took me, right? And yeah, I've been to Mons in 2001 Space Odyssey for two. But like, uh, but 
That's where it took me, but that's what brought me back. That was my rehabilitation. That'll do it. Because what happened was for 10, in Atlanta, it's $10 for a dance, right? So for $10, she's going to listen to you for the next three, four minutes, you know? So I'm, I might as well talk. Then I learned to find out that, hey, girls would look past this if your game is strong enough. You know what I mean? And that kind of brought my confidence level back to becoming the panda that you guys see now, you know? Because the way I look at it is like this. When I walk into any place because of my disability, every fucking eye in there is on me. Right. You know, you don't notice. Like, if, let me ask you, if you're walking down an aisle in, in Walmart and three people are coming down the same aisle and one's in a wheelchair, which one is the one you're looking at? The one in the wheelchair. You yeah, can't help it. It's yeah, not malicious. Yeah, yeah. It's just different. Your eyes are just trained yeah, to look at the difference. You're not, you're not used to it. Right. You're just looking at the difference, right? But from the eye of that person in that wheelchair, every fucking body is looking at it. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So like when I walk into the gym, I can look around and make eye contact with fucking everybody. You know? It takes a certain level of confidence to finally just say, you know what? If I'm going to be in the fucking spotlight, I'm going to look good in it. And I'm going <laughs> to fucking own it. You know what I mean? Because I'm already going to get the attention anyway. So let's go ahead and rock this attention. Right. You know? And and it's because of the strip club. Brought, it, I always say confidence is a catch-22. Right? What builds confidence? Success. All right. But how do you get success? You have to have the confidence to go over there and try. Right. All right. But once you get success, that success builds that confidence up. So now that confidence gives you a, a more uh, a chance to go out there and try in. Right. So the more success you get, the more confidence you get. So like now my will is like this. You know what I mean? Like I don't let this define me. If you ask me about it, I'll explain it. I don't have a problem explaining it. But the I don't need you to be like when they say, "Hey, you know, Panda." I don't want them to be the that to be the first thing that comes to mind to describe me. Yeah. Right. Now you know the funny guy, the guy with the grill, the rapper, all those. Now if they still don't know. Okay, the guy with the lamp. Let it be the third, fourth thing that comes down the line. You know what I'm saying? Because that that doesn't define me. And it's funny because I meet people all the time, and like the third time I'll meet them, they're like, "Oh my God, did you just get an accident? What happened to your leg?" Like. I was like this every fucking time I ever met you yeah. before this. You know what I mean? But you ain't ass. I don't care. I ain't telling. Yeah, I didn't notice anything until I saw the 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 picture. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I wasn't even thinking about it till you know you you mentioned. I was like, oh, that's right. Yeah, he's so got the picture. I saw that's why it's funny. Is because like uh, in my rap song and stuff like you don't that. limp or well, I didn't see you limping. Yeah, you didn't I look do, like you, but I do. You know, but you know, like I said, I just I don't care. I own it. I, yeah. it just it just it's, I don't I don't care. I don't, I don't give a fuck what you think about. Me. I'm, I'm at the point right. where I just don't give a fuck what somebody thinks. Like. You don't pay my bills. You don't fucking affect my life. I may never see you again. Why the fuck do I care about what the fuck you think? It's, I don't. It's funny when you get just how you get to the point when you're older. Anyway, like in general, just in, you know, you're so concerned when you're younger, what everybody oh. thinks and what they're talking about, what they're saying. And as you get you get older, you know, there's you 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 start to realize that like, you just don't care <laughs> because I, I can't think. Yeah. I saw this thing that said uh, they said, and then when you're in your like your 50s and 60s, you realize that nobody was ever paying attention to you at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, now I, that I don't care, but now guess what? They never did pay attention. But see, when you're young and like when we were in prison, that reputation mattered. Yeah. Right? That that shit that shit mattered. Like I got girls when I was young because of my reputation and stuff like that as a rep, right? Now, now that rep don't mean shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give a fuck what you think, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, if it's a friend or something like that, yeah, I'll listen. But it's like honestly, like if you're not like doing anything to benefit me. Why, why do I, why am I, yeah, your opinion I, doesn't mean, anything. doesn't mean shit. Right. And like, I'm the type that like, if you're a parasite, I'm going to remove you. Trash belongs in the trash. I don't give a fuck what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like negative energy, all that shit. I, 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 I'll leave it away from it. I, I have a question. So what is it? What is this? The green, the green one. Oh, it's Jade, right? So right. this right here is Guan Yu, which is the, it's kind of weird because it's, it's a Chinese He's like the uh, god of war. Okay. Right? And I got a lot of rash from that accident. But yeah, yeah. Well, this is the recent accident. Yeah. Right. So that's one you right here. He rides, he's on a horse, which is. Ah. <laughs> right. And that's him here. Okay. 
That right. was much more He's clear. the Chinese yeah. God of War. Which is weird because this is Chinese, but yet the dragon and stuff is is like the Yakuza, like Japanese. Yeah, I like, saw that. Yeah. I thought of that when I saw the... Yeah. Is the is the Japanese, but to me it doesn't matter. It's like it's Asian. I'm Asian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. You know, We're all Asian, the same yeah. thing. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's who he is. You know, and like you know, Where'd you and, get that? Oh, that? I got it in Vietnam. Yeah, I figured that. I got it in Vietnam. Uh, and and in Asian culture, jade is a very big thing. It's luck, prosper, you know, prosperity and things like that. So like being an Asian guy, I I can pull this off. <laughs> What's this one? That's just a dragon. Okay, this is a dragon. Uh, yeah, nothing special. Um, but yeah, man, that's, uh, I said, I, I, I said, I, I conformed for 20 years. Like I was that, you know, guy, but you know what? Still, even in those 20 years, like I was still Panda. Like I, uh, when, when I was, when it was time for me to be, when I was at work, I was, I was that guy, you know, I wore yeah. a mask, but like when I'm on my time, I'm going to be me. Like I own over 200 and something pair of Jordans. Right? Why do I own two hundred pair of Jordans? No idea. Because when I was a kid, I couldn't have them. Right. Like I, sh we shopped at Payless. You know what I'm saying? Like if I, if I, if I had my, I remember my very first pair of Jordans. It was the He Got Game Thirteens, right? And the only reason why I had that pair was because I took it off some kid off Marta. He happened to wear my size. You know what I mean? Like there was no way Mom was paying that money. Yeah. I was gonna say Boziak. Had, uh, it's funny you say that because Boziak, at one point when he was really like making money. He had like a hundred and some odd pairs of like uh, I want to say of, of Nikes. He had all the right. special ones and all this. He had a he had like a, a that's why storage unit. That's why Tyler wants me to meet him. I guess yeah. you know what I mean. I, I guess. guess we got a lot of, got in common, you know. But um, yeah, I it, it's a guilty pleasure. Yeah, and to me, it's almost kind of like it really is kind of still like an investment. They hold value. Like if shit gets the van, like I can sell them and they have value. Yeah, you know. It's, oh, he's sold and he, he now he'll buy shoes. And then he'll wear them, you know, for whatever, a month or you would have made five times within a month or two, 10 times, and then he'll sell them. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I even, I even know there was a kid that at the gym, uh, that where I, when I was in the halfway house, I worked at a gym, um, that my buddy owns, uh, there was actually like a couple of kids there that actually went and they. They did something like they stood in line to get new pairs of Nikes and then they sold them. Like, and that's all they did. Like they, they sold it to people right in line. Yeah. Well, they, or they, I don't know what yeah. they did, but they traveled around and they did this all the time. And they, they, they had all these Nike scam, like not scams, but they weren't scams because they were just legitimately right. saying, I have these. They're, they're basically they're, upselling into the second mar secondary right. market. And they had a whole, it was a whole thing. It was like, that's what their jobs were. It was like, are you, that's a fucking job. That's still like, now. Fuck, yeah. That's still now. Yeah, this was I only mean, a few years ago. Back, well, back then, like, well, the Jordan game used to be very, where well, they were very elite. They came out once a month and different. Now they're coming out every other weekend. Yeah, you know, every weekend. I, I think he's fucking it up where he's kind of flooding the market with it a little bit. Then now they're not as prestigious as they used to be. But back then, yeah, I was waiting in line at Lenny's Mall or, you know, I had a guy, you know, or some kind of plug. Now they got bots that literally will go online and, and buy them off these websites and then they go to resale. You know what I mean? But yeah, like, but I was never a guy. People call me a sneakerhead. I'm not a sneakerhead. I don't, I, yeah, I buy shoes because. You have over a hundred pair of Jordans. Yeah, but it's because I, I like, I like the colors. I buy based on like a color to fit an outfit more than, more than like, hey, is this one like hype? Right. Like, is this one like super valuable? I don't care about that. I actually hate it when it comes along like that because if there's a pair that I did want that is hype, now it's going to be harder for me to get that pair. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, I buy them based on like just what a lot of my uh, tags are like Panda and J's. Like, you know, I'm a Panda that wears J's. You know what I mean? Like, but now I kind of, I kind of step my game up. I like a little bit designer. So, you know, I'm, which I shouldn't because one pair of Versace's I could have bought like four pair of Jordans with. <laughs> You know, but yeah, shoes is kind of like my, my guilty pleasure, definitely. And, uh, and, and, and clothing. And I, I like to kind of like go in my own lane, you know, like I said, once you get, once you stop giving a shit, what people think about you, you you're just going to be yourself. Right. You know? Yeah. And I think a lot of people, you'd be surprised how many people like step up to me and just like, Hey man, I, I really like your fit or, you know, I really like how you rock this or whatever, you know, but I didn't do it for you. I did it because that's how I like to wear it. You know what I mean? And, 
But yeah, apparently a lot of people do do like uh, the way I dress, and, and I've been sent like as an ambassador. They'll send me free products so that I can like. Nice. I mean, I wish it got right. to the point where I like Gucci and shit. <laughs> Maybe one day yeah. I get big enough where Gucci is sending me free shit to wear their stuff. But you know, it's just little stuff here and there. But yeah, I mean. Kind of consider myself a little bit of a trendsetter. <laughs> People always tell me to write my memoirs because, like, I've been through so much tragedy in my life. Like, I've like, I've been through some some hardships. Why don't you write it? Because I'm all, I'm waiting for the happy ending. Oh, I, we had this conversation, right? I'm waiting for the happy. Stop, ending, right? It doesn't, you know, the, that's irrelevant. Because if it's going to be a motivate, if I wanted to be a motivational s- story, it doesn't have to be a motive necessarily motivation. Uh, um, it's just going to be writing. entertaining. It could just be for because you know for pros- prosperity, you know, for prosperity for pro- what? What am I trying to say? Um, Popularity. No, because that's what it really is about. It, I'm about the money. It, yeah, uh, to preserve it. Yeah, let's just say that. You know what I, I use for that? I use Facebook for that, believe it or not. We might have to clip that out. <laughs> um, posterity. 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 There you go. So, yeah, it's for posterity, you know, just to, just to have it all written down. And if you if you start writing and, you know, whatever, you take take a week and write an outline slow a little bit. It'll write like 30 minutes a day and slow, you know, I definitely got to start here. And definitely I was thinking about start. dictating. I've actually right. had broken down chapters. Right. And you I was say, then, you tr- then you turn around and say, okay, well, now I'm going to write this story and this story. Like if you start piecing it together before you know it, a year from now, you'll be like, holy shit, I got a whole fucking memoir here. No, I don't, I don't, I, the, the, the doing it, I don't think is the, the problem. It's the me wanting it, how it, how it ends. You know what I mean? You can worry about that later. If, if that happens at all. If it happens at all. You, exactly. you know, maybe, may, maybe it, it could be a tragedy. Yeah. Maybe it, you know, you know, who knows? It doesn't have to be anything at the ending. I mean, it's, it's, you know, some endings are just, you know, somebody walks out of fucking prison. It's like, like that, that book, you know, the hurt about the hurricane, the guy that, you know, was locked the up. Locked up it, the boxer yeah, guy, yeah. Like it was like, you know, oh, it's a happy ending. It's a happy ending. He spent 30 years in prison for something right. he didn't do. There's no, ha- well, they let him out. It doesn't matter. That's not, <laughs> I promise you that ain't a happy ending. So, you know, there doesn't have to be a happy ending. The happy ending could just be like, you know, I'm still going and. You know, I love my life and I've, um, you know, things are working out and I'm still, you know, I'm still in the struggle, but I love it. I could, that's good mm, enough. The happy thing, ending. Things aren't working out. <laughs> well, <laughs> but we're hoping that they will. Yeah. You know, I do try to keep like, because when I talk to other people, I, a lot of people tell me I should be a motivational speaker because I'm like that prep. I, I, I'm i a hell of a, uh, a pep coach. You know what right. I'm saying? But sometimes it's hard to even take your own advice sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's easier said than done. Like I see a, a psychiatrist and a therapist once a month. You know, I have demons. Right. You know, um, so like, because one of the main things that I have PTSD from my accident. Right. Oh my. I and it's fucking can't and, imagine. And, and it's the, one of the worst PTSD you could imagine because it's like, I woke up on the ground, conscious, on the floor, broken. Right. Yeah. I look up, I can see a, it was like around eight or nine o'clock in the evening. I see a street lamp. Yo, and like, I was just, I was a practicing Georgia Southern Baptist at the time, but this was the day that I lost all religion, right? I basically saved my own life with my own intelligence. I basically assessed my own situation by saying like, one, I don't feel any pain, so I know I'm in shock right now. Number two, I can't move, so there are definitely things broken. Number three, I'm getting very, very tired. I know I'm losing a lot of blood. Right. Right. So I'm like, okay, I'm losing a lot of blood. You see in the movies all the time, they say, don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. Right. I felt like I hadn't slept in months. Right. And I have no interaction. That's just me and my own consciousness. And I'm looking up at this light and I'm like, as soon as I don't see this light anymore, I'm dead. You know what I mean? And I sat there for 15 minutes, like literally slapping myself in my conscience to stay awake, you know? And it was the hardest battle I've ever had in my entire life, those 15 minutes, you know, because it was just so much easier just to say, I'm gonna go to sleep. Like I just was, I I felt like it was so exhausting. So now I equate losing consciousness with dying so mine have like massive insomnia right you know because like sometimes i'm like i feel like i'm I'll, I'll jerk back up 
You know what I mean? Because my body just doesn't want to let go. You know? So like I have I that's like that's like the worst thing. It's like it's like Freddy Krueger shit. Like you're scared to go, you can't go to sleep. You know what I mean? Like, you know? And so like, yeah, like that's uh, and, and that actually really only just popped up recently. I wasn't I hadn't always had that. It was after the pandemic. The pandemic fucked me up, man. I'm such a like an ex- extrovert that that isolation, it caused my brain to get all kinds of fucked up. And like trying to cure it. Is like even my therapist says, like curing your PTSD is not these drugs that I prescribe you. It's you have to be able to do it yourself. You have to go into your brain and like cut it off. But you tell me that, but like, eh, how the fuck do I do it? Right. You know what I mean? Like, how do I tell myself, like, hey, you know, like go to sleep. You're just going to sleep, man. No big deal. Just go to sleep. You know? Yeah, I do that, but then my body just jerks up on its own. You know what I mean? Like, I just, but that that is like, a horrible fucking thing to have to deal with on a daily basis. Right. Hey, if you guys like the interview, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified of uh, videos just like this, and leave me a comment in the comment section and share the video. Uh, Really appreciate it. Also, please consider joining my Patreon. See ya.